Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Friday night's presentation of Missed Opportunities, as these five tonight, usually six adventurers, uh, stumble, blunder, and heroically quest through the realms of Barovia in the Curse of Strahd. I am your DM, Peter. I'll be leading the session tonight. With us tonight, we have Jade playing the wizard Alimus. We have Elena playing the paladin Claire. Kyle is our brave druid Saurive. Sean is playing the dashing rogue Jesualdo. Normally we would have uh, our friend Liz playing the cleric Maris, but she is unfortunately away tonight. But we will we will miss her, but we'll welcome her back next week. And I'm excited to welcome to the stream, Anime Panda, who will be joining us with a as yet unnamed character uh, who we will meet at some point through the session. So she's gonna hang out a bit, uh, hang out with us, but uh, stay tuned. You're, gonna, you're not gonna wanna miss um, the reveal of her character. It's very cool. So uh, quick little recap. Last session, you guys um, escorted the body of the former burgomaster of the village of Barovia to the cemetery. It was the request of Irina Koliana that her father be buried before she accompany you away to safety. As you had discovered, she had been bitten twice by the vampire Strahd and who knows what a third bite might, make, uh, might do to her. So in the middle of escorting, um, the body, you were ambushed by wolves. One of them in particular, nearly the size of a horse, glowing red eyes and uh, um, seeming to possess a fierce intellect, harried you, but you were just able to retreat into the hallowed grounds of the cemetery, which the wolves did not cross, though they were nipping at your heels and even your very throats just seeming to tease you just a bit. After getting to safety, the mists closed in around the cemetery. All was quiet for a moment before receding again. And where you had left the coffin, just a few meters away, you looked to see it still was there, but this time covered in bouquets of black roses. Upon the bouquets was sitting a note addressed to Irina. It expressed condolences for her recent loss and was signed simply with the letter S. So your friend Irina stands with her brother Eastmark. She is looking at a letter, just staring at it and drops it to the ground and nearly falls over, seeming very fatigued. You see her brother bandaging wounds, Eastmark who had felled two wolves along with you in this battle. All seems quiet and the mists have receded for the moment and you stand there with the body of the Burgomaster just laying in the grass. Okay. I, we should, is everyone, okay. <laughs> Who's hurt? <laughs> Who needs some assistance uh, with their wounds? Oh, I'm fine. Everyone okay? I'm fine too. Okay. Um, the see. large dire wolf just sort of huffs a little bit. Does he lays also? Down. Does he also puff? <laughs> no, no puffs, only huffs. Okay. That's an important distinction. All right. Um, I'm going to quick. I uh, channel some divine energy to heal myself. Then and then. Um, approach Irina. Um, are, are you okay? 
Yes, um, I think so. They, I was surrounded by them, but they nipped at my heels, but they never, they, their fangs never connected with me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, I'm fine. I just, I, th I think th that thing, I think that was him. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. I it seemed preternatural. I recognized they weren't human eyes, but that same hunger, it's deeper, more intense than I've seen even in any beast. It's, it's, it's a hunger like nothing else. Yes, I, I got to experience a little bit of that hunger myself this evening. Jaswaldo says while rubbing his throat. Um, one moment, and Jaswaldo will carefully sneak out of the graveyard to recover his uh, throwing knife <laughs> and uh, from the body of one of the wolves and pick up one of the roses and bring them back. Okay. You have a black rose. Um... Irina, I know this must be a lot for you right now. Um, would you like to proceed with your father's burial, or do you need a moment? Uh, no, we we should proceed. I I think that my very presence in this village uh, puts everyone in danger. All the people here, even you, dear brother. I think this. I don't mean to make myself more than I am, but I think everything that's been connected may have something to do with me. And perhaps by removing myself from here, I can draw away the attention of... She just kind of looks over her shoulder and the castle looms against the gray sky above you. Oh, I think he's definitely in love with you, although he has some strange ways of showing it. Uh, but I know the signs. Uh, note... Roses, black rose is a little unusual, I will admit, but... Um, Bite marks. I'm not sure that I would call something like this love. Well, but... He will think he loves her. That's the important thing. At least in terms of our immediate danger. Mm. Fair enough. Well, Giswaldo, how about you help me with once again? We'll move the body to its appropriate resting place. And I presume we should... Um, collect the priest. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the sooner we bury this thing, uh, this uh, this man, the better. <laughs> sooner we can depart and get her into safety. All right. Uh, when you mention the priest, <clears throat> I get up and start padding over to the church and to go into the church. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I tell him to change. I would tell him to change back into the lizard thing, but I don't know that it would be much better. Yeah, Actually, definitely make sure not he the spider. Bite anyone? <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like the spider. No, no, the spider is the worst. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> definitely the worst. Mm. Um, you get over to the uh, steps of the church and go up. You see, there's still some blood spilled on the steps. Um, actually, did you guys even move the body of the one who fell before? Yes. Yeah, we, yes. Yeah, cause we, we buried <laughs> ate, Did you one. eat it? Sorry. I, no, I, I started to grab it as a spider and someone took it away from me. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's right. You burned. cremated it. Too. Yeah, we cremated it. Yeah. 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 Um, there's still some blood that you pad over um, spilling across the steps and uh, the rest of you here from inside. Uh, Morning, Lord, protect me! No, not again! <laughs> Uh, Paladin, where are you? Um, is the church um, is the church like close enough that if I yell from here, he can hear me? Oh, yeah, you'd be you guys fine. Are just in the graveyard, uh, yeah. out, out the back. <laughs> I'm just, I'm gonna I take a step in that direction, and yell back. Um, it's just sorry, nothing to worry about. Please, please follow him. <laughs> uh, you see, um, 
uh, the older man um, just falling over these broken pews in the main sanctuary, Sarif. Um, and he goes and uh, seems to hide behind the stone altar that you saw him praying at before, um, before just barely looking up the side of it. <laughs> no, I uh, so I stay, I stay kind of in the entrance mm -hmm. and look and watch him for a minute or just mm -hmm. for a second. And once he's like looking at me, I give a little Ugh. and like turn around and start heading out the door and then like look back at him and, like give my tail a little wag <laughs> you you hear him say under his breath i wish i had never woken up from that dream He's, he kind of glances towards the pew where you had laid him to sleep before i'm hungry oh well okay um, right, I'm coming, and he will accompany you out into the graveyard. Is there anything left of the coffin? Did we totally destroy it? No, we only got him out, didn't we? We only got him out. Yeah. No, right, I think we I'm just pried the top off. If we could put him back in, it would be... Okay, yeah, uh, the coffin is laying sort of out in the street. Um, it is a little bit broken loose um again it was made from pieces of furniture that irina and east mark uh broke uh within their own home to try and uh cobble this together probably so it's not, not the highest it. quality but um it seems mostly intact um if it does um need a little bit of repairing if any nails have been screwed a little bit from the opening I can nail them back in with a hammer which I do have in my inventory wow <laughs> cool prepared um, <laughs> are you proficient with those tools do you have a tool proficiency mm. no but it's is it a tool or just a an item of who doesn't know how to use a hammer use? <laughs> true but um you know any carpentry skill or something like that might be relevant if you were to, to okay. do that. But the tool will certainly help regardless. So um, go ahead and uh, make it a, 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 um, a check you would feel appropriate to repairing the coffin if you would like, if you are going to be um... the one doing that. Dexterity based <laughs> or strength based, um, yes. but no proficiency bonus. Sure. So. Animal handling. Um... <laughs> Uh, probably not. Uh, 12. Okay. It's a simple enough task. You find a couple of boards that are loose, and with the help of the hammer especially, you're able to drive a few nails back in to secure a few boards. It seems a bit sturdy. It should certainly hold the weight of a body, especially a light one like the Burgomaster was. Okay. Well, with the body then reinserted into its coffin and the priest hopefully coming along uh we can proceed with the funeral he seems to be distracted the priest um incredibly tired um looking in uh the direction of the church frequently above it around um but once he gets there he breathes a deep breath and seems to center himself and then begins his ceremony. He will instruct you where to bring the coffin, the proper place to lay it, and he will begin saying prayers to the morning Lord. Um, there, it's interesting because these prayers, um, talk about rest and giving the soul um, rest. There's not, there's sometimes in certain um, cultures, the idea of rebirth, but here in particular, the rest that is granted in by the grace of the morning Lord and in the night mother's arms seems to be a permanent one by the verbiage he has. Um, it doesn't take more than five minutes or so 
until he seems to conclude and Eastmark, the eldest son, steps forward, takes a handful of dirt and casts it over the coffin. After that, Irena does the same and they exchange a long embrace. I'm going to be okay, brother. And you're going to be okay now. You were never lesser in my eyes. He simply nods and turns to you all. Well then, that's done. What is it you plan to do next? Sleep, I think. We should likely rest, um, but um, it sounded like we had a couple options as far as where to bring your sister. Um, heard a little bit about um, a place called Velaki, but also um, an abbey near Kresk. Um, do you, Irina, do you have a preference of where you would like to go? Uh, no, not really. Um, but um, I, I do believe that the that Kresk is past Velaki. We would have to go to Velaki in order to to um, to get to Kresk, it's on the way. Okay. Kresk is in the central part of the valley. And, um, oh, sorry, excuse me, Valaki is in the central part of the valley. And Kresk is much further mm. west. Okay. Well, um, if it's amenable to everyone else, it, maybe we should stop in Valaki, see how it stands as a place of protection and if we don't deem it up to snuff then we can move on to Krask. that makes sense to me uh, as long as we rest first mm -hmm. i don't feel like going anywhere sure. at the moment i think with this being hallowed ground i know it's perhaps a little um it, perhaps uncomfortable um spiritually for some people, but it is certainly the safest place for us to rest, to be on hallowed ground. Um, perhaps we could find a corner here um, to set camp up before heading on. You you want to sleep in the graveyard? I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, does anyone else see anything wrong with that? <laughs> You, you can sleep out by the wolves if you like. Just wanted to... I just flop over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, sorry. Let's actually get some beds and such set up and I'm going to pat him on the head. <laughs> well, you guys will... I... You, you, you will know it is still morning. You guys, this was the first thing you did today. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, when we're all you, you really used... tired. <laughs> Oh, so god. it's probably 10 a.m. or some or so. Oh god. Okay. Uh. Well, we I mean, Jeswaldo, do you are you think you're up to traveling a little bit? Um. I would have said no until you suggested sleeping in the graveyard. Um, and now <laughs> I think yes, absolutely. I'm good for a good few hours of marching. Absolutely, let's do it. All right. Oh, I do seem to recall, however, um, that we had an invitation to visit a certain camp nearby. Perhaps we can do that on our way out. Um, Sisters. Well, yes, I, I, I think I might be up for that, too. I'm always up for that. Mm. I thought that you might like that. Um, do, you, do you remember where it is? Because <laughs> I certainly don't. Um outside of town they said well in which direction or maybe our more local friends might know I'll turn a glance to Irina and uh, Eastmark Eastmark gives you a narrow glance and he says now why would you be what would make you want to go there Frankly, it, at least for me, it's more of a, I want to know as much as I can about this area. 
And if they're a part of it, then I want to know what they are and what they stand for. I don't feel like I can do my job if I don't have all the information that I can. And I take it from your expression that you do not approve, but that must mean that at some point in the past, you also went so that you could have formed this opinion. So how can you expect us not to do the same? Very assumptuous, Gisvaldo. No, it has been quite some time since I've been to that camp, and going to it itself did not set my opinion. It's just... The Vistani are strange people. You see, they're a strange group. Children leave to go to join their order and are never heard from again. Sometimes seen. The sisters are really some of the only ones who come all the way up to Barovia here. But they say they have, some have powers. They say some are in, even in league with Strahd. I'm, I have no quarrel with Alenka and her sisters and the others. They've been brought, well, they brought trade to this city that we did not have before, but trust them. Hmm. From what I've heard, I can't quite do that. And I would suggest you not do the same. Oh, I don't trust anybody except for myself. A good start. Oh. Go if you must, but go with my warning. Your warning is very much appreciated. And you can be assured that anything and everything we need to do to protect your sister, regardless of where we are and what's going on, it shall be done. All right. His eyes soften and he sighs. Thank you. All right, sister. Let's look at that armor. And he kind of goes over to her and tugs a bit at the straps around the shoulders. It's good. Just remember. Move with the blow. It'll absorb most of it, but you have to move with it. Show me your parry. He steps back and draws a short sword. And um, he makes a little bit of a lunge towards her. And you see her draw this um, rapier and sort of boom, parry his blow out of the way. And she settles into a stance kind of uh, right shoulder forward, bit sideways, uh, arm far behind, and rapier up, that looks more capable and professional than you would have guessed based on her, um, the typical demeanor that she carries herself with. Better than just Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> Not better than just Waldo, but um, certainly just Waldo, you're like, oh, she's practiced. To, you know, it's, uh, to any uh, familiar with sword play, it, uh, you know, if, she's if you want, I am happy to give you a few pointers. I have uh, made quite a name for myself with the mm. blade. Just don't let him get too close. I say, I say quietly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is definitely a good starting place. She looks and uh, says, maybe I can give you a few too. She just smiles and just uh, laughs a bit under her breath. And says, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, it's just been, the days have been so dark, you know. What's, we can all spare a bit of mirth, right? Of course. Well, if we don't laugh, then we could cry, right? <laughs> we do. <laughs> Farewell, brother. And shall we be off then? Indeed. Give a... The camp is, I believe, to the to the west and the north fork. Okay. Towards the Sair Pool, is that right? He smart nods. Um, I'll give a uh, short bow to Eastmark. Um, I hope, perhaps, our pals might cross again in the future. And... Under better circumstances, I hope. Indeed turn and lead the way up the road. Okay. 
he will withdraw um, heading down to the road. You can see a couple people have gathered around, um, just peeking around the sides of houses and such. Um, and even if you have come forward and started to drag these wolf carcasses away, um, one or two of them you see are actually beginning to carve at them at the moment, skinning them for pelts and such. Uh, okay. With the mists receding, with the day getting a bit brighter, people seem, and with the presence of Eastmark as well, people seem a bit, uh, uh, a bit less reticent to be around. You will also hear the familiar sound of a cart wheeling down the street and an old hunched over woman going around the corner. Can't help but smell just the faintest hint of baked pastries and such wafting down the road with a gentle breeze as she passes through town. But do you leave the village of Barovia behind you? Yes. That sounds? Okay. You leave on a road to the west. You can see to your right a small wooded area above which the cornerstone of Castle Ravenloft is called, or the pillar, the, the pillar stone, um, which is a large sort of bluff over uh, upon which the castle Ravenloft itself stands. Twin spires, one much taller than the other, and a small bridge crossing between them. You look, and for a moment, you think you see what looks to be a flag flying on the bridge between them, or perhaps something else. For a very brief moment, it looks like a cloaked figure standing there, but when you look again to try and check yourself, it's gone. Well, I don't know about all of you, but I am very glad to be rid of this particular town. I don't know much about this place or anything at all, but anywhere has got to be better than here. <laughs> that's, uh, that's fair. That's not exactly uh, an easy start to our journey here. This place is dismal. <laughs> yes, that was the word, dismal. So you continue to the southwest and eventually come to a large river. There is a stone bridge crossing it. Um, seems to be a very sturdy make. And on the other side, trees close in on either side and the path the road seems to disappear into the woods. Crossing the bridge, the, the trees around you begin to obscure the castle, which was so easy, so um, ominously looming above you. And once again, you're surrounded by trees, like the time you got here. They seem to bend and sway soundlessly in the misty air. The day has grown brighter but as the sunlight hits this sort of misty foggy air despite there being more light it's almost harder to see though you have decent enough visibility and you see the path curving around heading north again it's been about an hour and a half at this point when Sauriv, you notice there's a raven following. It's, you thought you saw it before, just a, sound, a raven soundlessly flying across your path and then behind. But you notice that there are a couple wings or a, a couple feathers on its left wing that seem to be missing. It has a telltale mark on its flight pattern. It's a, certainly the same raven. You don't think much of it the first time, but you realize that the last 20 minutes or so, it has been following you. I turn back into a lizard. Okay. Ah! Welcome back. The, that bird is following us. And I'll point it out. 
Okay. You guys notice the same raven. <laughs> so, or maybe a crow. Hard to say. Here's the question. If this Strahd can be a wolf, could he not also be a crow? Possible. Or, I mean, maybe he's not the only one. Could be others with similar abilities. And I turn slowly to look pointedly at Sarif. <laughs> <laughs> Both friend and foe. Um, how far away is this bird? Does it ever get very close? Um, not super close. I mean, it gets within 60 feet or so, uh, but it's keeping a rather respectful distance, you would say. Um, just flitting about, watching you, occasionally landing in a tree, but uh, certainly following you, and you can see big, beady black eyes on either side. It turns its head <laughs> to look in your direction. <laughs> um, I pull out... Uh, actually, no, I'll um, go off kind of to the side of the road, and I'll use mold earth and kind of um, dig up the ground a bit until I find a worm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so yeah, you parted about a bit um, and uh, <clears throat> you uh, pull at what seems to be warm. It's stuck a little bit. And you keep yanking at it and you pull it up and something else comes up in the earth and you see it looks like to be the um, skull of some small mammal the worm is sort of wriggling around between the eye holes and one out one nostril and it just seems to be entangled in it grab the worm put the skull in my pouch okay <laughs> nice um <laughs> and then uh i take the worm and i start walking towards the crow okay do you see it if it lets me get within 30 feet i cast a spell <laughs> okay it seems to what is the what is the spell i cast animal friendship <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I put it in roll 20. All right. So, animal friendship lets you convince a beast that you mean it no harm. Okay. Wisdom saving throw is what I'm looking at here. All right. I wasn't expecting that. So, <laughs> ooh. Throw the DM off. I bet no. you five gold I love pieces. it. I love when people keep me on my toes. And Giswalter says quietly to Elinus, I bet you five gold pieces he's going to eat that fucking bird. <laughs> <laughs> I have a ten as a result. What's oh, his that's going to do it. Yeah, what's his intelligence, though? Oh, we oh, don't it's, know. His intelligence is a two. Oh, okay. <laughs> I <Great>. mean... <laughs> it works. <laughs> So once it's very friendly, um, which I think lasts for, what, 24 hours? Cool. Uh, I keep walking up to it and, like, try and... Is it on a branch or something? I try and beckon it down to me, basically. Okay. Yep. It uh, flies and flaps down sort of in your face. It's f sort of <laughs> flapping in the air sort of in front hold, of you. Hold out an arm for it. And then it flaps I take, forward and lands on your arm. I take that skull. Um, did, did the skull have uh, any fur on it? No. All right, I throw the skull away. I okay. reach in and grab some fur uh, wrapped in a little bit of cloth, mm -hmm. and um, I give it to the bird while casting Beast Bond. Okay. <laughs> I you'll, establish... have to, you'll have to display that one again. Let's see what <laughs> yeah, is the Beast Bond with you establish a telepathic link with one beast you touch that is friendly to you or charmed by you. Until the spell ends, the link is active. You can understand telepathic method. Oh. Super cool. Interesting. He's definitely, <laughs> he's definitely going to eat that bird. Oh, Any second now. now. Wouldn't he have eaten gum comes. as well? Lightly smack Jezwaldo. Shush, let him work. I gave the worm to the crow. I mean, it is breakfast time. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, it will gobble up the worm uh, with uh, great pleasure. Um, and we'll, we'll look at you and say, so, wolf, 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 wolf. <laughs> <laughs> um, wolf. I, I 
communicate affirmative, basically. <laughs> I, I, I try and suss out like what it's doing, like why it's following us. Uh, it will, um, watching, watching. For who? Wolves, wolves, bad wolves, man wolves, <laughs> Ooh. man wolf. Where? Man wolf give worm, man wolf. Start casting uh, mold earth again and find more worms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you man wolf. You, you bird man? Uh, no. I give a negative to that. You man wolf? Yes. Man wolf friend? Yes. Strange, strange man wolf friend. Never before man wolf friend give worm. <laughs> the Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> um... And now is the time we come up with a name. <laughs> but if you hear it, <laughs> call around and you suddenly notice a few the woods shifting around you. There I ask are, it what that is. A f well, you see that where you hadn't uh, noticed before, there are more ravens in the trees. Uh-oh kind of hopping about. They had been perfectly still before. Looking around, there are dozens, maybe a hundred, just sitting, eyeing you. I, I tell it I'll give them all worms if they land on the ground in front of me. And I just keep using mold earth in different spots and try and dig up <clears throat> worms, grubs, anything. I mean, make an animal handling check here. Yeah. Maybe he's organizing <laughs> a buffet. No, no, no. This is his life now. He will do Twelve. This, and he will provide for the crow nation. <laughs> you will see your friend will call out um, to them and a couple will come and land in front of you on the ground looking up. Most of them stay in the trees. Yep. And I will... Try and feed them as much as I can. And uh, once they're um, as, as many as once, once no more are coming, I thunder wave them all. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what the? F <laughs> um, let's see. I wasn't expected that. I was. So uh, 15 of them are in front of you and in the range of your spell. So it's half damage, right? If they save? Yeah, I mean, it's... it's they, they have one hit point. Yeah, so, so it's an auto um, kill. You see them suddenly... You guys see uh, Saurive begin to cast a spell and um, suddenly a enormous sound erupts from him. And these birds just explode into tufts of feathers and gore, splattering around. And um, suddenly the whole, gah, 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 they all take off from the trees. And like a black cloud, they take to the sky and fly off. Irina I... looks at you with horror. Um, I calmly start gathering up any meat that I can find. And I okay. say to everyone, um, the crows are watching for man wolves, he said. Something like me, apparently. Oh, so they were spying. And that is why you destroyed them all. You are not some kind of crazy, psychopathic animal killer. You They're are... good food. But Aha. it's, Irinos, it's terribly bad luck to to kill a raven. Why is that? It's it's just I don't know. 
the the Vistani, I think, revere them, but I just, I, I just know it's, you shouldn't ever do that again. I, I, I know that. So if it's bad luck to kill a raven, what does it mean when you kill like a dozen? Why? I'm not sure there's like a, like a bad luck discount on multiples. I'm just putting, I'm just how that works. putting meat in <laughs> my packs good luck, and stuff. Surely. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm going for. You, you, you went right around the paradigm. You went from bad to really bad, <laughs> and you went so far bad you came back around to good luck. That is what I'm thinking. Oh, God. I am just going to sh- shake my head. Okay. I have dinner. <laughs> yes. Wonderfully done. <laughs> You will feel, uh, sorry, very tired after this, the expenditure of this spell slot. It's just, it's been very draining. Even picking up the meat, you just feel sluggish about all of it. <laughs> it's not as exciting as a kill as you anticipated. And gathering the meat, it just feels kind of cold in your hand. and. Something about you just doesn't quite feel right. There's a chill at the center of your core. As a as a lizard, that's very concerning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you um, feel the negative energy grow. And did you kill the one you charmed as well? That you did yeah the, okay yeah. yeah. He, every once in a while, you you feel something scratching at your shoulder. And you look as if there's something sitting there, when it's not. But you think you can see the black eye of this raven looking around in your direction. That's I, uncomfortable. Why did there. you kill me? <laughs> I, I um. Oh, it gets better. Um, no, oh. you're cursed. Cool. Yeah. Oh. Great. <laughs> you feel it. Oh, solidifying no. yourself now it's easy to find out enough there is an there is a terrible energy that is settled within your core oh, cool no. <laughs> shit so. um do i know what that does um you feel like ooh, this le- this lethargy any anything you try to attempt is just it's difficult whether it would be an attack or any, if you were to even, it's hard to see um, through the mists now. You just, you don't find anything you do to be particularly advantageous. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yes. Cool. Um, so uh, as, I, as this sort of, of all, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> as this settles on me and um, I kind of like realize what's happening, um, I keep picking up <laughs> the crows, uh, but I say to the others, mm, she is correct. Do not hurt the crows. Ugh. But are you I kind of okay? like slump. They're, these are ravens. They're, they're not just... I, I look at them and look at the feathers and stuff. Ravens, yes. <laughs> uh, are you well, okay? Well, this was interesting. <laughs> I I feel cold. Slow. Stupid. Should probably try to figure out. Uh, hey. Mm. Come on. Uh, everyone go ahead and roll. Not a, hungry. Please just roll a d20 oh. at the moment. As everyone. Just slash roll d20, um, except for Panda. Or not. We'll get to you. So, yeah. 11. 14. 14. Okay. 12. Good to know. All right. I don't like that. <laughs> the woods are eerily silent now. Um, the little skittering of and flapping of wings that you heard, the odd caw that was there before is now completely gone. Even the wood creaking seems to have stopped. The trees are utterly still and corpse-like, standing 
against the misty background. The road lays open before you. <coughs> Shall we continue on? Feeling okay, sorry? I will not die. Well, yet. I'd hope so. All right, uh, we lead on. Um, uh, Irina, um, how are we coming up on the uh, camp location? Um, I think we, we, we have to get to a, uh, a crossroads first and then take the right fork. Okay. Um, the road should open up in a moment. All right. Well, we'll push forward then. Okay. You do come to a crossroads. And um, here you see there is an old wooden gallows creaking in a chill wind that begins to blow from high ground up to the west. A frayed length of rope dances from its beam. The well-worn road splits here, and a signpost opposite the gallows points off in three directions. Barovia Village to the east, Tsare Pool to the northwest, and Ravenloft slash Valaki to the southwest. The northwest fork slants down and disappears into the trees, while the southwest fork clings to an upward slope. Across from the gallows, a low wall crumbling in places partially encloses a small plot of graves shrouded in fog. Hmm. Not a place I imagine you would like to be, Jeswaldo. Ah, some of my very best friends have uh, made their homes in a place like this. <laughs> and he pulls out a sword and salutes the gallows. <clears throat> and he puts it away in one motion and looks with a raised eyebrow at Elena. Don't look at me. I'm not gonna judge where you're friends with. Certainly had my fair share of strange compatriots. Um, towards the pool, isn't it? I think your brother mentioned that. I believe so, yes. All right. Shall Continue. we? Continuing north, you walk, and uh, Claire, um, well, I guess everyone, as you're going, you hear a creaking noise behind you. I will look behind. Well, there was nothing there as you encountered it before. You now see a lifeless gray body hanging from the gallows upon the noose. The breeze turns the figure around slowly. And dead milky eyes look in your direction. Everyone sees this except for Claire, who sees herself hanging from the end of the rope. I'm going to close my eyes. Look again. Still there? It's still there. Um Guys, um body over there. Um what's it yes, look like? Yes, it's definitely dead. No, like what does it look like? A body. Uh, yeah, the body. Like a corpse, like uh, physical like, uh, features. What does it look like? Why do you? Why do you Just want to answer know? my question, please? <laughs> Fine. Um, it looks. Uh, uh, it looks not bad. Like maybe it's been there for oh, a few days at most. Um, uh, long. Does hair. it look like me, Sean? It's easy enough to see that it is um, likely a male. Uh, uh, so if you'd no. like to get closer, you can make a perception check to try and see the details. No, it's, it, from here I can tell it is definitely not look like you. It's a man. Look, he's got pants. He's got short hair. He's I got... Um, just sort of hit my head a couple times. Just look again. Still you. Maybe you do need some sleep. And it stars above. Um... <laughs> Okay. 
What time is it? How long have we been on this road? Um, it's probably about, you think about one o'clock by now. You've been walking for a couple hours, but um, there's still plenty of day ahead of you. I'm not tired, just stressed. Don't worry about it. Um, stalk down the road away from it, kind okay. of angrily. Follow. You hear um, the uh, creaking behind you begin to fade again into an eerie silence. The sounds of your footsteps or your companion's footsteps on the road um, as it turns into, um, f turns from nice uh, sort of earthen road into more of a gravel path you descend down and the footsteps of your companions become almost deafening to you as the silence is so profound everywhere else around you and uh, you, that gets to you for a second and you can't help but rub your neck just and you feel then chafing like something sore, not muscular sore, like sore skin around your neck for a moment. You feel short of breath. And then another sound makes its way into your awareness. Running water. And you hear another creak and a the wind begins to blow again. You hear the sound of some forest creatures off to the side. You hear a bird call. And do you think you hear a shout in the distance? There is sound, there is life further ahead, certainly. I pick up the pace, eager to put whatever this silence, <laughs> creepy shit going on behind me. The rest of you hear this as well, where there was once profound silence. There is now running water. A distress call or? A hint of music. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Yeah, my favorite. 19, not bad. 19. Um. This almost, this is uh, like a, a yelp, but it is one that is more, um, sounds more tuned in the, t the uh, melody of laughter than of um, distress. Perhaps of song or calling out to a friend across a field or something like that. Maybe we're getting close. Mm -hmm. Sounds like someone's having a good time. I think it's about time we had a good time too. I like that thinking. <laughs> so if you continue down, the road gradually disappears and is replaced by a twisted, muddy path through the trees. Deep ruts in the earth now become evident. They seem to hint at the coming and going of carts and wagons here. The canopy of mist and branches starts to give way. And far beyond, there are now black clouds boiling above. There is a clearing here, though, next to a river that widens to form a small lake several, several hundred feet across. Five colorful round tents, about 10 feet in diameter, are pitched outside a ring of wagons. Some horse-drawn carts, some much larger. Um, uh, sort of like multi-oxen type of uh, wagon. Some have this interesting sort of barrel-topped structure to them. Uh, there is a much larger tent down near the actual shore of the lake, and it is sagging a bit against its tent poles. Light shines out from within it. Near this tent, there are eight unbridled horses leisurely drinking from the river. The mournful strands of an accordion clash with the singing of a few brightly clad figures around a bonfire. A footpath continues beyond this encampment, meandering north uh, between the river and the forest's edge. 
Just while he lets out a very loud whistle as soon as we are within range. Just that sort of a uh, get people's attention sort of whistle. Okay. Um, you see um, a couple of the figures around the fire uh, perk up and look in your direction and one kind of points off your way. And um, what is everyone's what is everyone's passive perceptions? I have them written down for a moment, but if you could remind me. 17. Ten. 17. I thought in eleven. Was. Good. Uh Elimus and Sarif, you both hear the snapping of branches to your left and right. Off in the woods. Well, look. You see after being alerted by the sound, a halfling woman in leather armor coming out of the woods, crossbow in hand, not quite aimed at you, but at the ready. Oi there. Where have you come from? And what business do you have here? Uh, hello. I am Jesualdo Tocarembo La Tome del Fuego Santa Maldiva Zacatega de Jote de Santa Cruz de la Rosa. And these are my friends. And we are most recently from the village of Barovia. However, I think it is more impressive to say that we come from beyond the mists. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks and then lures a crossbow. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're that peacock that Alenka was talking about. That's me, right? The peacock. Threatening on through the mists like you own the place, huh? Ready to throw on a cape and bestrad himself. That sounds about right. <laughs> At least you can look into a mirror, right? <laughs> oh, that's all right. Uh, so this is your party then. Heard about you. You're all welcome. Um, Let's see. Uh, well, uh, Elenk uh, uh, yeah, said you'd be here to say Madame Eva as well. Um, she's a bit busy at the moment, but uh, go make yourselves at home. Just yell for strings to bring you some drinks when you get to the fire. Okay. I can't understand what she's saying. Strings. <laughs> yell for strings. Okay. Strings? Just go with it, Jeswaldo. Come on. All right. Yes. Thank you. Um, That's what I said, hasn't it? That's definitely what you said. Thank you. All right, uh, then. Well, what is your name? Meriwether. Meriwether. Ah, very good. This is Claire. This is Elimus. This is... Lizard thing? <laughs> Saurev. Lizard thing. You know, I'm just watching the road here. I don't really care. I'm gonna go back. <laughs> but I understand. All right. And, Come on, and, Jeswaldo. Don't get too. Uh, don't well, get I was going to introduce better. Elena, but uh, well, right, fine. Mind the twigs. What did you say? I said, mind the twigs. Aye, that was a real bastard there, you know. Try to find a piece of moss, you always find a dry birch branch. Well, Good I'm just going to stalk forward towards the camp. Okay. Just want to will follow. Yeah, I'll follow. Yeah, there's a... Um... Oh, I'm going to pull you guys over to the map here. Ooh. Come Ooh. Back, come or just back. sort of a... <laughs> I kill them all. Oh. Um, they all look like ravens. I know. <laughs> there we are. Can you can you see what we're looking at here? That's a negative Ghost Rider. Really? Yeah, it's all Let's black. Try this again. I'll give it a second. Oh, oh, oh no! Nope. Nope. Black again. We saw ourselves in the. Uh... Oh, here we go. Thing. I forgot to remove the dynamic lighting. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Well, that's fun. All right. How are we looking now? Looks great. Good. 
yeah, so this is the general layout of the camp. Around here, you will see a number of um, uh, people lying about drinking wine, it would seem. Um, you do recognize um, uh, Alenka, the half-elf woman from the tavern, who seems to be leaning against a wagon over here, um, drinking from a flagon of wine, um, seeming to be in a very intense conversation um, with a human man clad in leather armor. Other than that, this is a very um, diverse group of people. You see another halfling, you see a couple dwarves, um, humans, one, um, one male elf with uh, features that you haven't ever paired with uh, elf before. Uh, very um, sort of ashen gray, like skin and black hair and then dark eyes as well. Um, for those of you familiar with drow, immediately you think of drow at first, but this one is without the telltale white hair of the drow and seems to be quite comfortable in this. Um, though it's not um, bright sunlight, it is certainly daytime and seems to have no trouble with it. So he is keeping doing um, sort of sitting on a stool next to another one of the tents. Um, the people here markedly different from those in Barovia. Uh, laying about, drinking wine, laughing, a few sitting around the fire, singing songs. You see, this is much better. Elena, why don't we just have you stay here? Um, with, are you sure? But did you, did you hear what my brother said about them? I mean, I've never had any problem with Vistani myself, but could they be, could they, I, I, I trust Jeswaldo, my brother too. Um, I, the people may be nice, but I don't think that this kind of place would work, have the actual physical protection that she might need. Well, look, they this... appear to be on the move. Uh, it might be very safe. I don't know. I think she needs holier protection than that. Something uh, that might actually and... fend off a vampire. Oh, oh that's a good point. But yes, I didn't think about that. All right. I definitely do need a break. So let's, if we're all okay with it, I'm just, I just go sit down by the fire and take a breather, try to recollect myself. I'm feeling very distracted and not, not clear on anything right now. Okay. You see um, a, a dwarf in sort of plain clothes. Um, though wearing this uh, sort of colorful um, kerchief around his neck, kind of look in your direction and do a triple take. Just, just kind of shake his head and uh, go back to his wine. There are a couple of people singing songs. Um, most ignore you for the moment if you just go sit by the fire. Um, mm. yeah. They'll not actively make conversation with you. Just while well, I'm, I'm sure you want to acquaint yourself with people, why don't you go and ask for this strings character um i will do so uh, but didn't she say didn't meriwether just say to call for strings as in hey strings there we go that's exactly what i was after a and couple that... people um laugh around the camp um and you see especially um um alenka the half elf that you had become acquainted with before um, turns her head from her conversation, and I'm actually going to pull her token onto the wagon, so you, or onto the wagon, onto the map here, so you can see her. Oh, hello. And she uh, look. So she's over near you guys, but that's just an idea of you what she looks like. And she's, her eyes settle on you just while the one say, ah, now there is my peacock. Welcome to our home, Jesualdo. It is good to see you again. Uh, and I'm a and sure enough, you know our uh, favorite wine pourer strings. Yes, uh, bit tied up at the moment. Uh, she should be here any minute, but uh, she's a bit of a late bloomer, you see. I see. I, uh, my friend Claire here is very much in need of a drink. 
Um, who is uh, this fellow you're talking to? He is not bothering you, I hope. Eh? Or him? Hey, Sergey, go get me something to eat uh, right now. And he just looks and his face grows red. <laughs> and he says, <laughs> and uh, he storms off behind one of the wagons and she just laughs. <laughs> oh, not bothering me at all, no. Though I will probably get hell for it later. Huh? Here, no one is allowed to give you any shit. Huh? Not when you are one of us. It is good to be us. Anyway, uh, Strings, where are you? Uh, you just got to be done about now. Huh? Come on, we got some strangers here that need their wine. And um, coming from around the corner of another wagon, uh, you see someone emerge dressed a bit differently than the rest of them. There are most people, there are some fine clothes here, but most people dress at their ease. Alenka is wearing her typical, almost like Harlequin type of clothes. Um, it's not like quite like circus performer, but they are um, two different uh, uh, colors, like a, a bright green and a bright orange on her pants. Um, uh, sort of a flowy blouse that is cinched at the waist with leather. Um, sort of, she has this sort of confident androgyny about her that is um, sort of uh, mysterious and powerful. Uh, in contrast, the person you see coming around the side of the wagon, Panda, would you like to describe what this character looks like? So coming around the side of the wagon, you see a very eloquently dressed, it almost doesn't fit in, um, fair-skinned brunette with bright green eyes, uh, deep purple and green makeup, um, wearing a uh, red bustle dress, um, very cinched at the waist with a very large um, skirt that puffs out at the bottom. Um, and as she heads towards the campfire, you see her uh, carrying uh, what appears to be a puppet, um, that she is holding in her hand. Um, on her hands, she has these really long white gloves as well. She's very pretty, but in like a non-conventional sense. <laughs> Always bringing about her toys. Eh? Anyway, I have some business to conclude and uh, a few temp hours to diffuse, I think, uh, getting me some food. But uh, please make yourselves at home. Uh, strings will get you anything you need. It's about all she's good for. So, uh... um, all right. Well, I'll uh, hope to see you later then. Oh, perhaps you shall. Perhaps you shall. And she turns and uh, goes and ducks into one of the sort of barrel topped wagons in which you can hear. What sounds to be a hushed argument um, begin to arise from within. So when you say green and purple makeup, are we talking about like, as in you're made up like for a birthday clown or is this just the, the shades uh, that you have? No, just, just the shades. She has um, green on her, her lids to sort of match her eyes, but very purple, um, a very uh, a lamp, like very nobly placed uh, purple eyeshadow and a deep sort of purple lipstick as well. Thank you. Maybe uh, similar to what you're wearing right now. Very similar to what I'm doing. <laughs> Never would have guessed. <laughs> so um, she she heads towards um, puppet in hand and she leans in close and just says, "What can I get you guys to drink? Anything? Get me anything. Um, I can do that. Whatever you have, it is." of high caliber. She... Most of what is at the camp is wine um, of three varieties. There's typically like your base wine. Um, red, there's... white, and brown. Well, it's, it's mostly red. Um, there is uh, of uh, uh, the sort of everyday house wine that you guys have. You get a barrel that you can sort of take the bung out of and pour from there even. Um, you have a couple bottles. Wait, is that what that's called? A yeah, a bung is what I didn't know that. Stops it <laughs> um, uh, there is uh, Dungeons and Dragons, everyone. Yeah. Today I learned. <laughs> there is uh, a few cases of a nicer wine, and then you know that a, a few very nice bottles of a vintage no longer produced is also stored in um, Alenka's wagon. 
Um, Alimus won't even look up from his book and just say, oh, wine will be fine. Thank you. As you wish. She outstretches her hand. Um, I cast Unseen Servant, and you see her controlling this this puppet and it looks like it's it's bending over to pick up um some some like a, like a barrel of sorts almost and you just see it floating towards you and as the puppet is sort of walking in place it places it down and so does the the barrel land next to you as well so this is like a hand puppet or like a marionette a marionette uh, <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so basically she is um using the marionette to control the unseen servant right, that see. then brings over she puts the barrel down and does the same as it heads back and, and collects some glasses for you and, and you're brings using them over the unseen room. servant to control the marionette i'm using, using the, the marionette to control, control the unseen, unseen servant, servant. <laughs> <laughs> after watching this uh sorry of just kind of stares says magic licks his eyes <laughs> and walks towards the lake Okay. He's different. <laughs> I, uh, so are you. That is a very impressive trick. Where did you learn to do that? You must be so popular. You hear a, um, in this one of the uh, Vistani sitting next to the fire near you snorts loudly. As if amused by that. I look up when popular. I mention magic. Popular is not the word that I would you, go with. There's something very familiar about this woman he just stares at you for a bit do i notice him staring uh just, just I, I don't staring. think he's being subtle so yeah you notice um who had been just sort of picked a spot opened a book i assume do you have a hood you usually wear yeah Elimus? yeah yeah you see um eyes peek up from under a hood and stare in your direction Obviously, a mage. Yeah, she wouldn't recognize direction. him at all. It just looks at you. Marie? Uh, it's Strings here. Uh, how did you know my name? He pulls his hood back. This, it's, it's me, Alimus. <laughs> the, the the puppet that she was marionetting that was carrying over a pate of glasses just almost its arms extend put on its face like it's in shock and the glasses just fall to the ground <laughs> brilliant B brother is that is that you what the hell are you doing here I, I, I've been with this lot for years what are you doing we've only been here for a few days if that well if you mean this place I, I mean the same I, I meant the people I'm traveling with so are these your friends why won't you introduce me uh, yes yeah it looks confused this is just wilder um ever have a shorter version, my God. Um, well, Gesualdo de la Rosa, but it does a great service, disservice to all of the various titles and awards that I have won. You probably made up yourself, it. is it? Um, Sarif is our... Uh... You look over, there's a, <clears throat> what appears to be a toad the size of a horse that just leaps into the water <laughs> oh, and there's a giant splash we think he'll probably be dead soon but he seems quite useful right now um you you see a couple of the horses start and start to <laughs> sprint off and um uh use a couple of the uh vistani there to the dwarf that snorted earlier say oh hey god thumbs it oh then he start they start running after about uh you know Half the camp starts clearing out as these uh, uh, <laughs> half dozen full, like Clydesdale sized draft horses, you know, start sp sprinting away and the people go running after them into the woods to try and gather them after that. So. Um, this is Merisara, our cleric, and this is Claire. Sorry, uh, bad day. We can redo this later. We all have this. 
You'll learn to enjoy them through time. So this giant toad is your friend. Well, Interesting. He's, he's a wolf, spider. I don't like the spider. I nearly burned him a few times. Still thinking about <laughs> it. Um, yeah, he's some sort of I, sh I shoot Alimus a sharp look. Here, Claire, um, is there anything I can do to uh, assist with getting a drink to Claire? <laughs> uh, the, the barrels there should be like, oh, Yes, of course. Uh, uh, she... no, you, obviously, uh, you have a great deal to talk about with the lime is uh, amazing <laughs> to meet in a dream. You know, if you are really keen on getting a drink, I'm sure Alinka would appreciate you asking about her fine wine. You think so? Oh, yes. I've heard a lot about you. She's, she's not like seeing anyone, is she? Probably many people. But I mean, no one exclusive. Like, I'm not going to be walking into a room with somebody who's going to break my leg. Or something else. Um, You'll uh, be... <laughs> Mary, you would know that um, Alenka, Alenka um, is, uh, is certainly a free spirit. She is not one to, you know, take, like, many partners, but um, is not necessarily tied down to anyone at the moment so. all right i think that's a great right. idea yes i do do go ahead um don't tell her i sent to you but i'm sure she'd love to see her little peacock <laughs> this peacock is a very average size <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure i'm like as he's walking off i'm like um <laughs> yeah um just wallow gets inspiration <laughs> <laughs> he already um, had it but no. uh, thank you very much Tim. so uh, how did you you say you've been here for a few years not this place i've only recently just come here um the people i have been though oh We've we've been in these lands or wherever they are. Is it Barovia? I, I looked to Claire and obviously uh, Maurice is probably resting. She's quite poorly. Um, I say, how long we've we been here? Like two days. The days Three seem days, to melt. I think. DM just out of character. Mm -hmm. How long have I been here? It's not been I, long, but it's it's been a it's been a little while um the, the this camp that they have set up though you guys have moved around a bit you've been here for a couple months now okay. and it's been probably almost a year you've been with this camp hence the um the unease that they seem to give you in your unwillingness to really become a full member oh. <laughs> um well, it's not been too long. I've been here a few months, but I guess that's a lot longer than yourself. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what happened to you? You just disappeared. <sighs> I, I guess I wasn't used to feeling unwelcome. Un unwelcome. Now I, it seems like a dream back then. Um, My father is a pathetic fool. He'll be long for the gallows or, or the grave soon enough. You see her kind of smirk a little bit, but she tries to pull back the, the enjoyment of her face. My condolences. <laughs> yeah. So Sound. how are you two related? Uh, my father, I was young. I was really, really young. Um, my father turned up one day and and brought home Marie, Marie here and adopted her. I was probably only two or three at the time. You were a little baby. You were so sweet. He sort of cringes at that. <laughs> um, she like rubs his head, like pushing the hood even further back. Trouble imagining him being sweet, but we are, we we're all young once. Limus is still only 18, but um, he says, um, when I was 10, she just disappeared, and my father didn't care, or not, he cared about anything. 
He's probably too drunk to notice. Hmm. Well, well, did things at least get any better? No. Essie was great. She took me in into the mansion and I learnt my, my trade, I suppose, there. Is Essie still with Which us? Is? I'm assuming she's still with us. She is. She Maris has been speaking with her most of this time. Mm. Um, very quiet, sort of. Um, after the uh, events that happened, um, sort of the spark of what was happening before seems to have really left. She seems hollow-eyed. Um, and she and Maris are just kind of keeping to themselves, speaking quietly. You might want to stay clear of her. She doesn't speak fondly of you. Yes, I know. Well, I guess, you know, one of the reasons I might have left then. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, um, can I get you anything else? Um, are you, I know are you, you. Are you treated like a slave here? <laughs> not a slave, but uh, I'm not willing to do the things that are needed to become respected around here, shall we say. And what does that entail? The mists. I don't want to touch them. Oh. Anyways, I presume you're here to see Madame Ava. It seems to be the only time travelers come by to see them, or at we least enjoy the celebration. We've been told we might get something out of doing so. They all do. Manu, Manu, you, you must come with us. Come with us. You can get away from this place. We'd have to see what she thinks of that. I'm sure Lenka would be glad to see me gone. What are you up to? What, what are you? What are you doing? You're not. Well, when I knew you, you weren't an adventuring sort. I always thought you'd stay at home. I found a new passion. Uh, we appeared here. I don't know why. Uh, me and Essie appeared with the others. We didn't know any of them. And now we're here, escorting this lady to the city. My name is um. Irina Kuliana, I have I seen you before in the tavern in Barovia with Alenka and the others? Did they ever bring you to the city? Did they? Yeah, well, 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 perhaps <laughs> once or twice if you wanted to come and perform in the tavern, uh, but not uh, often. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I was more of the, the kiddies performer, but yes, you may have seen me. That's a beautiful. You have a beautiful dress, if I if I don't mind saying. It's um, work. Workmanship is not something we often see here in Barovia. Um, it can't be comfortable to travel in something like that. It seems to be rather rough and on the road where you all are. Um, it's quite. I don't I don't mean to presume. I'm just. It's... I like to keep it classy. Sure. Understood. I noticed that something. Is quite frayed. I'd be happy to um, help you fix it at some point. Dad, it's, I'm sure it's fine. It would just get frayed again later. Um, but thank you. I, I do appreciate it. It's a pleasure to meet you. And sure. she bows and so does her marionette. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, likewise. The city sounds exciting. So you're on sort of an escort mission, one could say. But we are, yes. Um, we've we've had a, a rough couple of days. We have some wolves following us. Exciting. Well, I suppose you could say it's quite exhilarating, but I mean, someone is chasing the lady. It's been a rough a man. time, to be honest. A man, wolf, whatever you want to call it. 
Vampire. Vampire. A beast. We all know of those. However you want to call it. Well, you should be safe here. At this point, um, you see a couple of the uh, Vistani people returning with some of the horses. Uh, they seem to have caught them, caught up to them. Uh, what is Sauri doing at this time? Is he still just splashing around in the river like a giant <laughs> um, <laughs> He's a giant toad, thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> Which makes less he, sense why we'd be in the water, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he He's just sitting in the water with um, sort of his eyes right above, just watching the camp. Okay. Otherwise, he's just kind of just chilling because he feels like crap. Um, noted. Um, Jaswaldo. Hmm. Jaswaldo does a little spinny, dancey uh, entrance into Alenka's camp uh, tent. And as soon as he sees her, he says, Well, I am here. What are your other two wishes? Um, you will, as you open this door, you cut off conversation between her and uh, this other, um, uh, the, uh, the man in the leather armor. They seem to have been arguing over something and she um, quickly flips over a, a piece of paper that's on a desk there and um, sticks a dagger into it and looks in your direction, says, Ah, peacock, was there a first wish you have granted me? If so, please remind me. It is uh, the fact that I am standing here in the, um, a crowded tent. Um, I'm sorry, I seem to have uh, interrupted something. Uh, but I am given to understand that you have a very fine wine here. Ah. Perhaps uh, something better than what was available in town. In fact, I think we might have spoken of it. Indeed, the very, uh, the champagne has not been made in six years, they say. It has been quite some time. I happen to have a bottle. Champagne? A bit of cheese, perhaps? A fine bread? Shall we find ourselves a quiet spot? I think that's a very excellent idea. Hmm. Imagine that. I have been known to have a few now and then. Sergei? If you wouldn't mind uh, finishing up this business here, then he just <sighs> sighs, nods, shakes his head, and she goes, "All right, meet me up river about uh, one hundred paces. There is a nice spot of grass. Take this blanket, lay it out. I will see you there." Absolutely. Oh boy. And, uh, Jess Waldo does what he's going to do. But first, okay. he would like to make an insight check, if he may. Sure. Because, you know, he's stupid, but he's being controlled by someone not so stupid. <laughs> the 15 is what I have, Broad. Okay. Let us see here. Do -do -do. Um, you notice the glint in her eye when she's doing this and kind of, uh, while it's not, there's not anything about her that's lying per se, she is not being entirely, um, she's leading you on is the best way to say it. There she is. She knows she's manipulating you. Hmm. Any sense of what it is she's hoping to gain? Um, not yet. It is, uh, it is tough to say, though getting you alone seems to be the first step. Well, uh, he will take the blanket and he will go back to the camp and he will say to Elimus, I am off to have a little bit of a nap. <clears throat> and he takes off his gold pouch and he hands it to him and says, could you hold on to this for me? Sure. <laughs> He's just kind of in the middle of the whole reunion conversation, I believe, as just Waldo went off uh, pretty immediately. I, oh, well, I would not be so rude as to interrupt him when he was speaking. So if it is, of not, course, if if it yeah. is, yeah, okay. makes sense. It's fine. Keep your wits around you, about you, just Waldo. Um, yes, of course. Um, I am going one hundred meters up the river. Remember to think with this. 
Uh, so much less fun. Claire chuckles. Do I, do I know anything about what is a hundred meters up, up the river, or what? If is this something that Alenka does? Um, I know. So no, not necessarily. It is a nice. Um, you know that up there there is a bit of a um a nice little hill that one could go up and behind. Um, it's sort of a private spot. Um, for you know, a picnic. Many different things. The river curves around on the side. It's sometimes used for bathing. Sometimes a group of women or a group of men will go um to bathe together, and they'll just say, um, you know, I'm going up. I'm going up the hundred, you know, is what they say, you know, just to go okay. up and have a bit of privacy. Um, so everyone knows where I'm going. <laughs> I have nothing of value that I have carried with me and uh, I am on my way. Did Peter freeze? He's just a very good actor. Yeah. <laughs> it appears so. Uh-oh. Did we lose the what is happening to the world? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's frozen. We're all stuck. I will say something I forgot to mention earlier. Hmm. Um, uh, with uh, strings appearance, the the dress is a beautiful, well made dress, but it is you can tell it's old. It's well worn. Hmm. Um, and her, like I said before, her hair and makeup is very, it's all very in place. It seems very put, done like it to, to a T. Everything is very well done. Even if she might be kind of dirty, it's, it's well placed. Mm. Oh, I'm the DM now. Ha ha ha! <laughs> <clears throat> you have all the power. Oh, I have the power! Cle uh, this is uh, going to get very awkward yeah. very quickly. Did we level up? <laughs> Have we leveled up? Uh, level yes, up. we are level 20. Um, Sweet. <laughs> Excellent. Everyone Excellent. has, everyone can pick one um, legendary magical item um, and boost My up. My router reset. 20. <laughs> You're no longer the DM. We're level 20. I'm the DM now. <laughs> what? Oh, no. <laughs> right, you will be playing oh, wow. Mad Mary. Let's have uh, ca cameras off, apart from Peter. Okay, and then I believe it is da, 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 is Claire. Da, 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 Sarif. Marie. That's it. We're back to normal. Damn it. <laughs> well, we, at least you got the level 20 in, so I've done my yeah. character yeah. already. Yeah, I've <laughs> legendary item. And, and, the, and the legendary magical item. Oh, yeah. I didn't get to pick that yet. Uh, just while though, after you spread out the blanket, you do see coming over a bit of a hill um, the uh, sauntering form of Alenka. She is holding a bottle, two glasses in one hand, and a small basket of sundries in the other. Um, the best just while does a very elaborate bow. Okay. <laughs> she uh, mimics it in a way that is maybe just slightly mocking. <laughs> and continues down. You notice now you are removed from the sight of the rest of the camp. And she says, Why don't you just uh, make yourself at ease? <laughs> I'm always at ease. Though. And I am a great believer in making my own luck in this world. But rarely am I so lucky as to find myself alone with someone so beautiful with such wonderful things to eat and offer. <laughs> so I am forced to ask, What is this game you're playing? <laughs> game. What do you mean, game, Jesvaldo? Come now. Aren't we just allowed to have a good time together? Of course, but... Come now, let's at least start with... 60% honesty. 60% honesty. Okay. Mm. I give you 60% uh, honesty... And I expect 60% in return. How does that sound? Uh, sounds more than fair. Okay, let's pop a bottle, huh? Mm. And she uh, sits down and undoes the, the cage around the cork and pops open this bottle. Am I familiar with champagne? Um, 
perhaps i'm not really familiar with the area your character comes with, from but... uh, it's a spain analog uh you would be <laughs> thought that was obvious <laughs> sure uh it's rare uh it is though certain sparkling wines are something you'd be familiar with um, so it does it it bubbles it, it, it bubbles, bubbles and, and the way it's so it's bottled it does not seem to have been pre-tampered with uh no okay a fine observation she and, will pour uh, some and hand you a glass and she says ah oh, well first just well though where is it that you come from Ah, and how long ago did you come to this mist? I came from the beautiful land of Am um, on the sword coast in the beautiful city of Athkatla, where for many years I was revered as one of the greatest swordsmen the nation had ever seen. Indeed. That 60% honesty. 60%, huh? And as well, far as the second question, well... When did we meet? The second question. When did we first meet? Oh, just the... Uh, that would have been yesterday at the end. So that would have been our second day. Hmm. Yeah, two days. How has Barovia treated you so far? What Horribly. Do you think of this it's time? an awful place. This is literally the happiest I have been since we have arrived. Well, what unhappy things have befallen you then? What the... Well, let me see. And I begin to recount with detail everything we have seen and done. Okay. You do. Um, as, as you do so, she will recline on an elbow and begin to sort of undo the leather vest that she has on. Um, she does have this blouse, but she begins to make herself a bit at ease, just yeah, keeping it... you in an intense glare and... As you, just, just Waldo mimics every move that she makes. Everything that she removes, he also okay. removes. Okay. Um, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't get too far. But she, as long as you are talking, she is fiddling with her clothing a bit, sipping wine, and um, uh, she would say. So you tell her everything that you guys have done. Let me see. I will let's see sixty percent honesty. <laughs> I would tell her. I would tell her everything about the uh, house, mm -hmm. and I will tell her. I would tell her about the the church. I will tell her about the snacks, the uh, the meat pies, and the gigantic wolf. And I would tell her that we have been paid to escort the lady, Irina, to uh, someplace. I'm not really sure where. Okay. Very good, Jesualdo. Um, tell you what, uh, knock on my door tonight. Uh, I think it's time you went to see Madame Eva. Moses has been such a pleasure. I like when you are honest with me. She kind of leans and the blouse sort of falls off her shoulder a bit <laughs> and she catches it and says, When the day is young, I have so much more honesty to give. Oh, I am sure you do. She reaches out and kind of twirls a bit of your hair to the side of your head. And then she, ah, my. And she seems to swear in a language you don't recognize. Um, and as she does, uh, her hand withdraws very quickly from your head and it uh, yanks a bit of your hair and she <laughs> laughs a bit and says, I am so sorry, you're clumsy of me. I seem to have uh, put my elbow on some sort of spider or something. Ah, I think I need a bit of, uh, perhaps a bit of a uh, rub myself with a bit of ointment and... Uh, it should be very better soon, huh? Yes, but, uh, spiders can be most annoying. Hmm. Indeed. Did that, well, seem, uh, that, that seem all <laughs> above board to me? That was you can make strange. an insight check. <laughs> Things are going so well, and then... <laughs> she got your hair, bro. Really? A spider? Another 15. Uh, you didn't see a spider, and um, she seems to be gathering herself. She's re-cinching... Um, the uh, leather uh, sort of waistband vest that she has and then uh, is also, she takes uh, the dagger she used to uh, 
sort of cut the foil away of the champagne and you notice with a impressive flourish she spins it around and puts it back in her boot and she says well then just one more tonight did, I did this evening yes <laughs> go find your friends I'll clean up here hmm as you wish <laughs> just Waldo returns to the group have I managed to get my hands on some alcohol by this time? Oh, certainly. Yeah. Awesome. Um, the so, wine is is fairly uh, free flowing. This is like a little sweet. It's 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 not perfectly clear red too. There's a little bit of like a haze to it. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like cheap wine that you mm -hmm. guys have, but it does the job. It, okay. It's um, keg. With Maris off um, with Essie, um, I'm throwing them back a lot harder than uh they see me do previously i've previously been a little bit more reserved in my drinking and i'm just no holds barred right now okay uh marie keeps uh using the puppet to keep pouring her to fill her glass and just making sure it's always always fill mm -hmm. never ending glass all right um claire you begin to feel the heat of both the wine and the fire in front of you. You notice that um, now that you've been here a bit longer, uh, you've been talking to um, this character Strings, the rest of the group seems to pay you less heed. There are less um, suspicious glances, a bit of roasted meat begins to be passed around to the group. And then a sudden silence falls. As you see down by the river, the tent has opened and a robed figure, hooded, seems to be standing at the base of the water, regarding looking in your direction. Is that, uh, oh, what's her face we've been hearing about so much? Madam Ava, I believe, is what I've heard her referred to as. Is this yeah. Madam Ava? Sorry? She. Um, so you guys are about 50, 40 feet from her or so, and you hear a voice say, It is no dream, Jeswaldo. It is I. You're quite awake. Come, if you'd like to know more. <laughs> and she turns around, enters the tent, and the flaps... <laughs> flap shut. I turn and look to the group and sort of grin nervously and say but of course that, that is exactly what the dream would say. Mm. Give me a hand. I'd yell over to Jez Waldo. Just trying to stand up. Ooh, you and look like I, you're feeling much more relaxed than you were. <laughs> we will find out exactly what a dream would say after a break. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to cut off. Oh, no, no, standing no, totally up, fine. But this is a good time to take one. So yeah. we will uh, do that. So sorry to drop out on all of you. Um, my router decided it was a great time to reset. So um, we should be all good. For uh, you want to get a, so. you want to get a router then because a the router is much better than a router. <laughs> I would definitely do that if I were you. It might be a bit more reliable. Cross the pound pond jokes. Pound. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? <laughs> <laughs> see you in a bit. Uh, see you in a bit, guys. All right, stick uh, with it. Bye. <laughs> okay, welcome back, everyone. Um, we're just gonna kick off where we left off. The party made it to the Ser camp uh, and met strings aka mary or should i say mary aka strings um after some discussion and whatnot now the party has just met who they must assume and strings would really confirm is madam ava who has beckoned them to come forth Wait, is she beckoned everyone or just 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 one though is, is everyone everyone's going right yeah everyone's going yeah okay uh, the toad is down by the water and slowly kind of lurches out of the water. I could have sworn that was an Irish drinking song. Yeah. The toad is down <laughs> by the water. <laughs> yep. Now just march straight down. You lot have fun. And strings will begin 
sort of cleaning up the area, probably. You will see the, the tent flap will open again, and as you don't come, it says, Mary. It's time you've made a choice. Come in. She like looks to her marionette. It look it like she turns it to look at her and it shrugs and she just shrugs back and heads down. I love that so much. <laughs> this is going to be the I've Avenue Q, one. the Avenue Q version of Curse of Strath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, the toad notices that the tent is not big enough, probably. And I'll then we'll turn back into sorry. How long have we been here? By the way, um, it's been. I mean, I assume the conversation took over the course of an hour or so, as did just Waldo. Um, it's beginning to get into the late afternoon. The fire is becoming to be the main source of light. Um, so we got the sun a short is going rest, down behind the mountain. Uh, certainly, yeah. If you guys want to apply a short rest at the moment, oh, you're more than welcome sweet. to. Murray As you were just for you. sitting about, and, yeah. Just, uh, just when he's coming towards the tent, he turns back into his lizard form. He just looks at him up and down and just says, "I'd love to learn more when you have the time." I do not think you can learn this. Not, not your magic about you. Perhaps and she heads on in through the tent. Okay. He follows. Just uh, one also goes into the tent. Yep, I go in. A short rest doesn't yep. do anything for me, damn it. <laughs> you don't get arcane recovery? I've used it already, so... No. And it's once every long rest you can use it. So I'm really... Really hoping for that long rest. Um, so yes. I can get rid of this uh, temporary maximum mm. midpoint reduction. Indeed. Because mm. the new level got me almost back up to my previous maximum hit point. So as you push aside the heavy leather flap, there are magic flames inside you, casting a reddish glow over the interior of this tent, revealing a low table covered in black velvet cloth. Glints of light seem to flash from a crystal ball on the table as a hunched figure peers into its depths. As the crone speaks, her voice cackles like dry weeds. Come in, don't be shy. <laughs> Impossible. Is there a uh, place to sit down? Or an obvious place to sit, or? There are cushions surrounding the table that you can sort right. of kneel down upon. Sure. Plop right down. Yeah, sit down. Yes. Just uh, one will also sit. You are in the company of Madam Eva. Have you heard of me? I think the name's been tossed around a couple times. <clears throat> Claire. Your wit deflects almost as well as your armor. But I think some things pierce more deeply than you care to admit. You're lucky I'm in a good mood right now. <laughs> Luck has nothing to do with it. Forewarned. <laughs> Forewarned. Always. Sarive. There are none of your people here. Now, if you find your way out, you may just find the strength in you needed to provide for them. Yes, in yourself, not in that which you so often become. Lick, hmm. lick. <laughs> Elimus. I know how you long to 
burn a path ahead. The magic sits at your fingertips, but you cannot cast it yet. I have seen it in your mind. Be careful and know that it will not solve your problems as you think. Just as the burning of that pathetic man would not have solved the problem you had with him. <laughs> Present, no. <laughs> that one takes the cake, doesn't it, Elimus? <laughs> yes, I know you've come through the mists. Just like you, Mary. You hide behind the strings, I know, but... Tell me, search your heart. For the cards lie stacked on the edge, as far as your fate goes. Where do you belong? Will you breathe the mists like your sisters before you? Or will you hold the memory of your dear parents in your heart and draw the path away from their same fate, perhaps to change it for others in the future? Mary, dear. You know you go with my support whichever way you choose. Is this your way of saying goodbye? Because you know my choice. Come here, my dear. And she reaches out, gnarled hands, like oaken branches upon a long dried tree to put on either side of your face. She brings you close, kisses your forehead. I am glad the mists have trapped these, if only to give you the company you deserve, at least for a little while. Though I hope your fate is different than the thousands before. I as well. Madam Ava can peer into the future. Madam Ava has been part of this land for far too long. And she can see into the swells of the mists, read their path, read their signs, read your purpose here. Yeah. Would you see it? Yes. Yeah, my focus snaps very, very quickly. Yes. Marie sits back down at the table. Very well. She reaches into her pocket and takes out a deck of cards. Begins to shuffle through them. This is just the beginning of your story here. I cannot tell you how it will end, but I can tell you the tools you need 
to survive it. I will speak of something that will empower you through it. And I will even tell you, yes, the mists will tell me uh, the moment of most peril that you may see it coming. <laughs> Shall we begin? Let's. Um, is there a price to pay for this knowledge? Mm. No, no price. Your strings have already begun to be pulled in this land. So, this spotted gift. Or a curse. <laughs> we shall see what the cards say. She begins, she places three cards face down in a sort of delta formation. And then takes a smaller deck, draws two, and places them in the middle of the delta and one below. You see five cards sitting before you. Do you see them, mm -hmm. players? Yes. Indeed. She, her hand hovers over the one to the far left. This card tells of the history, knowledge of the ancient will help you better understand your enemy. Ah, the eight of coins. The tax collector. The treasure. Hmm, yes, the Bistani have what you seek, but not those here. A missing child holds the key to this treasure's release. Her hand begins to hover above the one highest the northmost card. This card tells of a powerful force for good and protection. A holy symbol of great help. The thief! <laughs> Seven of coins. What you seek lies at the crossroads of life and death among the buried dead. She begins to sway a bit, catches herself on the table, and then holds a hand above the easternmost card. Hmm. This card is a card of power and strength. It tells of a weapon of vengeance, a sword of sunlight. Eight of glyphs. The bishop. <sighs> What do you seek lies in a pile of treasure beyond amber doors. Now, she moves to the bottom most card. It was taken from the second deck 
These have a slightly fancier filigree on the outside. This card sheds light on the one who will help you greatly in your battle against darkness. <gasps> Me. me I have to find the <laughs> that makeup looks she looks so sad <gasps> panda a vistana wanders this land alone searching for her mentor she does not stay in one place for long seek out seek her out at St. Markovia's Abbey, near the mists. And lastly, your enemy is a creature of darkness whose powers are beyond mortality. This card will lead you to him. Executioner. She closes her eyes for a moment. I see a dark figure on a balcony looking down upon this land <laughs> with, <laughs> with a tortured smile. Well, that was uh, very interesting. This is all I have to give you. Any other advice for what happens here? What, sorry, having trouble thinking straight right now. Uh, I think what uh, she's trying to say is, do you give personal readings? Uh, not necessarily what I was going for, but a valid question. What is it you wish to know, Jeswaldo? Uh, oh, no, nothing for me. Thank you, uh, this has been very interesting and uh, quite enough. Actually, I have a question. I need to peruse my notes briefly, though. Hold on. <laughs> I can't remember things. Sorry, if anyone else has anything to say while I do this, please go ahead. Sorry, I had to fix my mic. It unplugged itself by me fumbling oh. my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Among my people, we use the bones of our ancestors to cast auguries. I'm not sure if I believe the cards. Well, have you ever played a card game? No. This is not a game. Oh, no, no, of course not. But if you play enough card games, you eventually begin to respect the cards very deeply. Hey, I, I have a question. Uh, Madam Ava, if you don't mind, um, I know that seems to have taken a lot out of you, but um, mm. I was Sweet wondering child. if you know anything about, um, well, I don't know what it is, uh, but I saw a person. Um, she had black hair, um, very, very pale face. Um, in black dress, she um, 
she was behind Amber doors. Um, and she did something to me. I, or gave me something. I don't really understand what it was, but I don't, curious as to whether you know who that is. Pale face. Do you speak of the night, mother? I'm not sure. I've that's the name that um the priest said, right? Uh, out of character. Yes. Because he said the morning lord and the night mother. Mm-hmm. Um well the last time I heard the name Night Mother, I don't know, it seemed like a a sort of parallel to the god goddess that I follow, but this was a different figure. Saloon was not here, or at least she's hard to reach here. I'm afraid what you seek is sealed away beyond even my capabilities of scrying, at least for now. What is sealed is sealed for the moment. Though, if my readings are correct, Destiny may lead you there after all. DM, is Irina with us? I imagine she stayed outside. Yeah, in the I was tent, hoping she, she did. Would... Yeah. Yeah. Because I have a question for the. What is the relevance of this lady, Irina? Who is she really? <laughs> we know she's not related to a. To the. Whatever his name was. Ismark the Ismark, yes. Oh so you've learned about the siblings, yeah? Hmm. Adopted. You know about adopted siblings, don't you, Alliance? I do. The love between them is no lesser for the lack of biology. Need not be, as you will see, we are all adopted here among the Vistani. That is not my concern. My concern yes, who she indeed. is. Irina. Her name was No, I cannot say. Why? I will not speak that name. Deep. Lest it be heard. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. You will know. For Mary knows what becomes of the souls who pass in this realm. She has heard it said, yeah. and she is part of it now. Does she know herself? She does not. And Mary will tell you as well, the souls here cannot leave. Yours cannot. Ours cannot. They are trapped by the mists. You mean to in death reborn. too. What? You mean in death too. Like they all souls literally cannot leave. They cannot pass beyond the veil. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shit. Just Walter, I really Those don't think you're who suffer here suffer in perpetuity. <laughs> well, um, hmm. that is disconcerting. 
If you want to wake up, Jeswaldo, you will. As a little baby, screaming for a mother too poor to buy you clothing. And perhaps too soulless to care for you. How many times will you be reborn till you can live to be such a handsome young man again? And what will happen to you then? Who knows? The cycle is endless, so long as he rules. I will see him fall, and I walk out. Sorry! <laughs> mm. The bones! Casting the bones will speak of the weave and of the reality of things to come. The cards are just a way to hear what cannot be heard. They are just a way for the hands to see, the skin to taste what the mists already know. You see, I see, and he kind of like stands up a little straighter and gives like a sort of a bow. And then she does the same. You hear some joints creak in her back as she does so. I have a question. One, one last thing. Uh -huh. Um. Madame Eva, is is he the reason that well did he cause whatever it is that's trapping people here like is it directly tied to him yes what did he do That which you are separated from. Is what he has severed. You know. You know who has no dominion here. Seek it out. At your own peril. <laughs> Any other questions? Madam Ava grows tired. No, I, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm going to bow and step out. Yeah, Chris Waldo looks like he's about to say something clever, but then doesn't. And looks thoughtful. And walks out. Clever. <laughs> he looked like he was going to say something <laughs> clever. Then they realize he wasn't in his capabilities. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave. So, I know it was done in, you know, my effusive manner do you know did you write down the the card readings by chance i, I did oh yes yes indeed. Yeah, i was okay. trying to say i'm so glad we've got elena here but my mic was turned off so, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so i got well elena you want to compare notes sure uh sure. So... let's let's recap this because <laughs> not like spoiler alerting though but this might be important never, <laughs> never would have guessed so uh leftmost card um for history, uh, tax collector, eight of coins, indicating a uh, treasure that a group of Vistani that is not this one has, and that a missing child is the key. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 
North card, a force of good or holy symbol, the thief, seven of coins, uh, crossroads of life and death among buried dead. Um, rightmost the, sim card. the symbol also had something to do with protection. Yes, Great some help. sort of protection, yeah. Um, rightmost card, a power strength, a sort of sunlight, bishop, eight of glyphs, pile of treasure beyond amber, amber doors. Mm -hmm. uh, southmost card, um, someone who will help in battle, the mists, a Vistana searching for her mentor, seek her at St. Markovia's Abbey. Yes. And then the final card, um, about the our enemy who is beyond mortality, something that will lead us to him, the executioner, uh, something about a dark figure on a balcony. Yep. Looking down over the land with mm -hmm. a smile. Yeah. Yeah. That's reminiscent of something you guys saw on the way here. Yes. Which is like, <laughs> I swear to God, that was a completely random card reading. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was cool. Marie um. gets up um, from sitting down and reaches out for Madame Ava's hand. And if she gives it, she'll kiss the back of her hand and then sure. turn and leave. She will, um, Uh, um, in a moment you'll say Mary yes there are deeper ties deeper ties than those you know trust them though they pull more strongly and more deeply than you are comfortable with. These are the ties that move history. Go with my love, child, and let me sleep. Thank you for everything. And, and she seems you'll to feel become still. Is she alive? A slight sag in the shoulders over and over again. Okay. Murray will um turn and leave and, and head outside where the others are. It's become closer to evening the time inside seems to have passed much faster than you were expecting the fire is roaring higher a few more tents have been set up around and sort of a almost a small festival seems to have begun taking place here there are a few dancing around the fire um, a smaller cooking fire to the side a um, large animal seems to be roasting over the top of a cook fire, spit style. Jugs of wine are being passed around freely without question. Music is playing and songs echo through the night air. You swear for a second that you can see a bit of starlight above, just for a moment. You look now, maybe just a bit of embers flickering up to the sky. Strange as it is, there is joy here. Well, um, Jaswaldo will begin cleaning himself up and uh, say good night and make his way to um, Alenka's tent. Priorities. If you did want to learn more, I know that Madame Eva, Madame Eva grew tired 
I'm happy to answer any questions. She says you are trustworthy, and I believe her. Well, it's a vote of confidence. Um, oh, that was a lot to take in. Um, could you tell me a little more about what you know about this thing that rules here? I take it you dare speak his name. Well, it's what, Strahd? You've heard that tossed around a couple times. Mm. Yes, are, they are. Are you guys um, attempting to speak quietly and privately in this I, situation? Uh, I'm absolutely speaking quietly. Okay. Marie would also be doing the okay. same. Yeah. Just good to know. Um, go ahead and both of you make a stealth check. Um, ah. Covering your voices is not something particularly difficult, but just to, um, you know, both speak a in question. a hushed manner, but not look like you're sharing secrets in a corner for a while. We'll just see how that goes. Anyway, what? Should I still be taking my disadvantage for being in chain mail? No. <laughs> for, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, wanted to be sure. Go ahead and make a regular uh, regular roll here for just... Uh, well, being... it was shit anyway. <laughs> was so there sick. was. <laughs> so, so, about the Strahd guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Who is this Strahd dude anyway? <laughs> What's up with that cat? Um, uh, you know, 14. interestingly enough, um, as soon as you sort of mention your name, uh, you know, Mary, you kind of um, scoot your way in between her and a passing dancer and kind of um, obscure the conversation a bit instinctively. Uh, you're able to, you think that no one knows the subject of your discussion. So you maybe you will know, maybe. Mary, that talking about Strahd is a bit taboo in the camp. Some openly do it, but um at times a certain certain things will be expressed and both Madame Ava or even Alenka will be almost violent in their response to certain things said. So I believe we should maybe move somewhere a little bit. More concealed if you're not so good at containing your voice. Sorry. <laughs> Had a lot to drink today. Um, and you, and a bowl. Uh, wherever you think we could get some privacy. Lead on. Um, I, I'm, I'd, he I'd head off to somewhere like private, probably not the 100 yards away thing, <laughs> but like the like the somewhere relatively undisturbed, you know? Yeah. But not sneaking off that it becomes obvious sure um you're able to uh you know a couple spots you can make your way around the corner of a wagon or just off halfway towards the woods and sort of find a spot away the um grass is cool now um or you expect you know sitting down to feel the sound of, you know, or hear crickets, and other night creatures, but you don't. Only a brief flapping of bats ahead of you, occasionally, and Any you're ready to bat off mosquitoes around you, Claire, but. Um, the only things you bat off seem to be crawling up from the ground around you. Worms making their way up onto your boot. An occasional centipede crawls over your hand as you lean back, sitting on the ground. No, is this that like that bit from Fellowship with the rider shows up? Because that's what A I'm imagining bit. right now. <laughs> there is, despite this being a cool evening, the comforts are deceiving. Hmm. The breeze is just a bit too cold. The silence a bit too still. And the earth, though soft, contains creatures unsettling. 
Yeah. Take it you're not a fan of insects. I I don't like things crawling around on me. Um, I don't know For the moment, saying. Mary, they do not. They do not. You are not assailed by insects. So. <sighs> I'm be honest. I normally am very comfortable on a night like this. I travel a lot. It's not like I sleep in, you know, fancy inns, comfortable beds. I, I'm not dependent on creature comforts, but even here, I, <sighs> there's something about this place that puts everything on edge and I feel like I can't relax. I, I see things and it's, it's not just the bugs, it's everything. I mean, <laughs> compared to some of the shit I've seen in the past couple of days, the bugs are a trifling matter. What horrors have you seen? Um, I mean, we've been attacked by <sighs> un undead. That's kind of my bread and butter, you know, not the most... Um... <laughs> Uh, strange for me, but we just encountered a very strange creature. I don't know, it was like this amalgam of trash, and it just, it was gross, and I think it almost killed me three times. That's not something I've experienced in a long, long while, um, but more like strange visions. Um... <sighs> I didn't even tell Maris this. Um, you, there's a crossroads up back the road um, and a gallows. Um, I saw myself hanging there. <laughs> I uh, Long since uh, I've seen any visions like that, I've had some been been through some uh, some shit some shit in my time. Um, I've had fits of crazed visions before, um, but long past. I've n not thought to see myself in such a position in many years, and that was disconcerting to say the least. See my own body just. <laughs> swinging along or to see people that I know are long dead just appear suddenly when I know they have no right to be I mean there is no peace here if that's what you're wondering Ravia is a weird place and those who die cannot escape they remain prisoners in Strahd's domain. But why? <laughs> Not much more. I don't know, but I mean, you've only been here a few days. You must know that there are some who... <laughs> Barovians are just scared people, frightened, but some don't even have souls. Not at all. No charm, hope, spark, and I mean, they don't even cry. Um, I mean, luckily we have the ravens who can carry the lost souls. <laughs> Kyle, that was amazing. That was an amazing look. Oh, boy. Uh, Whoops. Yep. <laughs> Killing them is incredibly bad luck. I've um I've gotten that sense um from our uh, experience so far today. You've killed have you? I haven't. No. Um, I uh, know someone who has, and he frankly doesn't seem to be doing too well. You wouldn't know I anything about how to fix that, would you? 
Um, I'm hoping it was out of ignorance, and not oh. malice. Um, I, I'm not really sure it was either of those, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, he was just hungry. Yeah. He, well, he's not exactly. This is sorry, by the way. The uh, the lizard, or wolf, or spider, or frog, kind of whatever floats his boat at the time. Toad. Toad. Sorry. Um. He's very direct. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really sure he thinks about things like malice or and I don't he's not stupid he's just he just is primal instinct yeah when he's hungry he's hungry when he sees something that he wants he takes it um although if we tell him not to he's not an ass about it so that's nice at least uh <laughs> I, I mean, I have no way of removing a curse. Um, something like that I would probably ask Madame Ava about, but she is tired. Anyone else here have that capacity? What is, does anyone else here have that capacity? Um, not that you're aware of. Um, Madame Ava is really the only one who has any sort of magical powers here. Okay. Um, sadly not. I'm sure Alenka would love to believe that she had that ability, but she does not. Well, I have You're to ask the night. in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking it would might be best for us to just rest here for the evening. Um, and perhaps we should return to the group. I did it occurred to me I had one other question. I was sort of curious whether you knew anything. You said that um, the souls are trapped here, right? Um, yeah. In Strahd's domain, is he the warden, so to speak? Or is he just as trapped as anyone else? I mean, if this place is a prison, it would seem he has the most power. Whether or not he's trapped, I do not know, but... Warden is probably a good word. Fascinating. Well, I don't know about you, but I think I could frankly throw back another one or two drinks just to mm, get all of this shit off my brain. Marie stands up and does almost like a curtsy along with her, her marionette. Just says, well, I've been asked to serve, so as you wish, more oh. wine. No need to serve. You can drink with me. I'm not sure that's a good idea. But oh. thank you. Drink or no drink. I'm not really inclined to have you service if you're going to be amongst our companions now. It's not really the way that we ought to treat each other. You see the marionette kind of like turn to almost look at Marie and it looks like it's thinking and she turns to look at it and just goes you know I guess if I don't belong here anymore maybe I will have a drink come on it's probably going to be a while before we have a good night like this, so let's make the most of it, shall we? Sure. And uh, Marie follows uh, Claire. Cool. Um, it's a, it's fun. Um, Marie, suddenly feeling you have a few more people you belong to that you can drink with um, and not the um suddenly there's a way out of the political structure of this camp it makes the drinking so much easier and the drinking doesn't even really matter but just sharing a cup of wine with a new friend is just a really good feeling finally you feel you feel a little unbeholden to something which is 
something you haven't felt for a while. A freedom to decide for yourself what is best for you. It's something you feel. Um, so got I know just Waldo's got a task. Anyone else? So Alimus or Saurev? Anyone uh, else doing anything? I like, well, see, Alimus is looking at his book around the fire, and he looks, yeah. looks up at Saurev if he's still by the fire. <clears throat> so Saurev, let's learn a little bit about yourself and <coughs> maybe dissect something here and there. Uh, make a will save DC fifteen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Uh, is yeah, that wisdom? Eat this worm. Is that a wisdom save? It's a wisdom save. Yeah. He's good at those. Uh oh. Oh. Shots oh. 16. <laughs> 16. Hmm, interesting. You're strong of mind. That's great to hear. You don't notice anything, <laughs> but <laughs> um, that's very good. So, uh, are you getting his drink? Do you like the red stuff? I have decided that I do not. <laughs> I cannot see well when I drink this thing. Well, too much of it, of course. It's okay in little doses. It is not very filling. I prefer the water. What, the dirty pond water? It's not dirty to a toad. I can understand that. Very true. So what are you? You dradic? Sorry, what was that? Are you are you some sort of dradic creature? I know little of your kind. Lizard folk. I'm a druid. Somewhat rare, but we guide our people, usually. Hmm. So why are you here? That's a decent question. I fell asleep and woke up here. Pretty much the same as all of us, I guess. Okay. I look at, um, is the lady around? Um, Irina is, there's a very intoxicated dwarf sort of just making conversation to her. Like she's just kind of like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's this guy like this close to him just being like, I'm telling you, the wolves were right there. And we just, we just, at him over the head with our axes and <laughs> oh man oh you i mean like like right right there hey i think i need to go really rescue close someone. smell really nice you see just her just being like mm -hmm. i'll head nice. over to uh <laughs> look at the dwarf he needs to make a will save as well um <laughs> nice. okay. excuse me sir i just need to maybe ask my friend here something okay all right Someone foul. What's that? Someone's got a foul. <laughs> um, let's see. I've got a um disadvantage. Twelve got... on my. Oh, he's got... Does he have a disadvantage? Well, I don't know if he's drunk. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Oh, probably. I'm clutching. Well, uh, I got I got a, a dual twelves anyway. So oh, okay, yeah, he fouls. Yeah, I'll just look at. I just need to maybe. I'll turn to the lady, maybe save you from the drunken dwarf. Uh, I'll help offer my hand to her. And he, you, you just hypnotizing him. So, yeah. all right. What is he? What is he hearing? He's he's probably he probably doesn't hear much. He's like, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take a sleep, dwarf. Ooh, I think that was whiskey, not wine. Whoops. Oh, you got to tell brown from red better. Oh, and he just goes... <laughs> <laughs> hits the ground. Words to live by. I offer my hand to her to, to offer oh, uh, to help her. Um, thank you. Uh, maybe that come was, in. um... Well, harrowing. 
Um, and I'm really only talking about his breath and nothing else. And... Smell it from over there. Um, <laughs> maybe you'd like to spend some time over with, with us, the group. Sure, I just didn't want to be rude. I mean, they are our hosts, after all. Great hosts they are. Well, I mean, just just because we don't understand them doesn't mean they're not... Um, I don't know, maybe... Yeah, you're right. It's, it's oh, I was very completely different than sincere. what I'm used to. Yeah. My uh, plus 20 in sarcasm. <laughs> uh, we go, yeah, we go sit back over the fire. Um, I pour okay. her a glass of wine and cool. sit down and just chat, what they chat idly about anything and everything yeah. you know she will she will be grateful for the idle chat indeed um something a little different you notice she'll take out sort of a sewing kit and sort of start mending some of her clothes that were a bit damaged in the walk she seems to be rather good at that you notice in her pack that she opens to she's really well prepared there's a lot of trail rations you see like a little tinder box you see a sewing kit. There, there are like a lot of things in there. She is, she is ready for a journey. Um, everything you set your eyes on on the pack is like that. Someone knew something who packed that pack. So, mm. yeah, it's very good, very well prepared. Brings there, us to just, just Waldo. Oh, I sorry. Oh. Is anyone? Is there music saying? playing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it? I assume it's very peppy and lively. Mm -hmm. okay. By the way, uh, by, by the way, I just wanted to point out: Did Sariv have to make that uh, save against Elimus's, um spell at disadvantage because of his curse? Ooh, <laughs> too late. No, nope. it doesn't matter. It's just ability checks, ability checks, and attack rolls. Okay, got it. Um, it was only a test. <laughs> uh. After a while, Sarif will um, pull out a bone flute, clearly made out of a human femur, or human-ish femur. Um, and and Foot flute. <laughs> try and play along like a little lute. bit. Yeah. Like lute. <laughs> you're trying. Oh, you're trying. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, go ahead and make a performance check to try and join in there. Uh-oh. This would be a there's disadvantage. A, there's a big minus yeah, two. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a two. Uh, solid they keep, two. <laughs> <laughs> they keep looking over at you. You you keep um you know you're essentially like a, a you know any sort of instrument like that is set in a particular key signature. Yours happens to be in B. <laughs> and everything they're playing is in uh is in c major basically and so no matter what you play it is discordant as hell and the it, like you try and match the melody but it just there's no way to do it and you keep trying and they keep glancing over to you and it's bad it's eventually bad. i'm like please stop playing if i'm if i'm over there at that point would I would I be there at that, about that point? You might be rejoining us if you'd like to. If if I see him doing this, I'm gonna try and use our mage hand to remove the instrument from his hands, and um, she'll sort of come up uh, beside him. You'll see like the puppet will kind of be like reaching forward as if it's grabbing something, and um, she outstand her arms and be like. Some of us aren't musically inclined for those like that. We tend to dance. And she outstands a hand to dance with him. It's it's easy to pass away, but the one thing you notice, sorry, that it, it's weird at first, but the hand that reaches out and takes the bone flute is pale with long black fingernails and this enormous ring with a bright ruby is on the index finger. And it's there's you seem to look at a cuff on the shirt of this hand with lace on it. And it takes your flute and you're like, what is that? You look up the hand and it suddenly kind of disappears and you just see then what seems to be a puppet hand. You also know this is Mary. Your mage hand looks to be a 
the hand of an aristocrat, though pale and black fingernailed, wearing an enormous ruby red ring. And it's, is that normal for me? Or is that new? Um, occasionally, you notice that your any sort of illusion spell mm. you make seems to be bent to the will of the land and the will of the okay. master. So it's, okay. it's like, oh, I strawed hand with him. That's weird. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm like pouring my tea one day and it's just instead of a puppet hand, it's just like, oh, hey, Strahd, how's it going? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Great. Just high fives the mage. Um, um, Strahd don't high five. <laughs> I, I doubt that anyone here knows the dances of my people. I'm sure they'd be willing to learn. And then kind of almost hearing that, Recluse's back is kind of like, maybe I don't want to dance the dance of their people. <laughs> I do not know the dance of my people. <laughs> so, do you, have you never danced before? I was too young when I left. And most of my people are dead. Claire, I think, do, is there wine over there? I think I'll, uh, and she kind of just goes wherever Claire is and tries to get some of the wine. She has an expression of defeat on her face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just come soon. It's fine. It is fine. <laughs> it's nice that you tried. <laughs> tried. All right. Anything else happening? Um... Finally getting tired, he mold, molds earth and slips himself sort of underneath where the fire pit is a little bit um, till he feels warm earth under the fire and then just has like the end of his nose sticking out of the dirt and that's where he's going to sleep. Got it. Cute. <laughs> Lee, you're muted. Or Jade, you're uh, muted. Sorry, every now and again you keep hearing... Maleficus Artibus, and there's like something like a feather tickling your nose. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> so, just Waldo. Yes. You go to the um, wagon of Alenka, I believe. Mm hmm. And again, you hear no sound inside, though a soft glow of light seems to be lit. You open to see the half elven woman, this time her hair down, wearing a what in daylight would be somewhat diaphanous gown, though now is just slightly reflecting the candlelight. Just a couple lanterns and candles lighting the interior of this wagon. And she simply smiles at you, hmm. turns around, walks very slowly to a chair on the other side of the table and beckons over her shoulder for you to come. I go in and I close the door. Good. There is in front of you a glass of wine and a glass of wine in front of her as well. She picks hers up and begins to drink it. Hmm. Um, I've seen this movie. I would like to make an insight check to see whether or not there might have been anything in this particular wine. Sure, go ahead. Make an like insight is, check. Is, there, is yeah. an insight? I don't know what to be better here. It would be in, uh, perception or insight based on... Are you going to like... I mean, perception would be like... Like, you, you wouldn't just be a, a casual whiff. You would need to, you know, sort of smell it at a point. You could try and disguise that, but... Um, it's, are you trying to read her or read the wine? I'm trying to read her. I think the fact that the... That would be insight, the, I'm, definitely. I'm thinking that the, um, the fact that the wine was already poured seems to be a little suspicious. 
Sure. He's not a particularly wise or interesting intelligent man, but that seems in his experience uh, amongst the criminals, people pour their own wine from their own bottles. Sure. You gotta let it breathe. Hmm. But I mean, she's drinking from the same bottle, so... Is she, though? She said that her glass was already poured. Both of your glasses were already poured. All right. Okay, well, here we go. I take a drink and I sit down. Okay. She takes a drink and she sits down. She's... So have you had a good night so far, Genvaldo? Well, that Madame Eva was quite a character. Indeed. Um, I take it she is the leader of your group? She is, yes. Tell me, uh, what did she tell you about, huh? Hmm. I, I am not very well versed in your customs, but I feel like it might be very bad luck to reveal such a thing. <laughs> Cesivaldo, come on. I am the one who brought you here, huh? And I am the second in command of this camp, haven't you told? I uh, thought no, we were I didn't perhaps know that. the second friends. in command. That is. Uh, what are your duties as second in command? Well, I look after the madam. I make sure that her will goes fulfilled without question. Hmm. I manage the uh, the day to day goings. It is, you know. Eh. It is a little bit boring, but, um, you know, we must do our duty. So, and she begins to sort of tug at the lace around the neck. Uh, now, this is a subject of conversation I am much more interested in pursuing. <laughs> Indeed. But I have my needs as well, yes? I have my own interests. And those interests would seem to be asking me questions, like the ones you asked this afternoon and the ones you are asking me now. I can tell you that I am much more amenable to such questions, given the proper stimulation. Very well. Name the price. And ah. I will give you a question. Let's battle you and I. So you want to know what Madame Eva told me? This is what you want? Or is there something more? Just what she told you. And you couldn't ask her yourself? You have met her. She is powerful and wise, but at times a bit scattered and short-tempered. So. So. Well, that is what you want. But I want, I think you know what I want. It I have known what you want since the first moment you laid eyes on me. Very well. I think we have an agreement. I will tell you what she said to me, and you will provide the stipulation. Yeah, I thought you were a romantic. Uh, you have I'm... a way of fumbling over your words. That's the finish line, I think. Well, I would have very much enjoyed continuing the romance. However, as soon as I set foot into this particular uh, boudoir, I began to understand that this was more of a transaction. And I wish to continue along the vein that uh, you have started. Transaction? Hmm. You want information? Uh, I don't care very much for information. That is for other people. I am looking to relax and to that end i pull out from my pack my black sap pipe mm -hmm. have you ever tried the black sap i cannot say that i have oh it is 
even better than wine, if such a thing is possible. Hmm. Allow me. And I hand it over to her. Fill it. You first. Hmm. If you say so. And I take an opium hit. Okay. Is there... I? I do not know any sort of mechanic associated with it. Is there I don't know either. I, I would say it's similar to, to alcohol that works sure. for it. It's, an, it's a self-destructive vice. Are you well-practiced? Um, it's rare, I would say. It's not something that everyone sees every day. It's something that somebody that his, um, his group of bandits... Uh, waylaid and stole their possessions and just happened to have it okay um go ahead and make a con save with advantage con save so that is a four but with advantage i get a 13 okay the normal effects extreme relaxation. You recognize them. You feel them. Mm, yes. Well, I have been... And I pass over the pipe to her. This place is difficult for me to process. Our arrival was strange, and everything that has happened to us since has been even stranger. So, I have been... Convincing myself that this is all a dream. <laughs> Madame Eva <laughs> told me that it was not a dream. And I must say, she was very convincing. She spoke of souls and the fact that even in death, people here are trapped. Mm. That is quite disconcerting. The fact that perhaps the consequences for one's actions could continue over and over again. You are very philosophical. Uh, My peacock. It's the black sap, I'm sorry. (laughs) She takes the pipe from you and comes around the table and sits on your lap and takes a little hit from it herself. So, the reading then. Oh, the reading. Um, Let me see if I can remember. Uh, uh, There was something about uh, history and um, something about protection, Uh, something about power. Power. That was an exciting one. Yes, I recall. And an ally and an enemy. <laughs> Are you uh, being entirely forthcoming with me, Jesualdo? I have not lied since I come into this room. That is not what I asked you. I said, Are you being entirely forthcoming with me? Well, are you being entirely forthcoming with me? Why do you want to know this information? (laughs) Has she ever spoken to you? Have you ever had a reading? And if so, what did she reveal to you? I am a Vistana. Our fates are blind to the mists. I cannot know. She stands up from your lap and kind of rocks around the corner, downs the wine glass quickly and sets it on the table, pinches her nose and says, There are protections we have in this land, but uh, it's the future. I do not know. So forgive me, Jesualdo, if I am entirely interested when someone who comes through the mists as is prophesied can finally change the fate of what happens. And suddenly this very attractive man who I enjoy the company with, who finally finally I can make a change with is entirely unwilling to tell me what the hell they are doing here and what their 
reading is from the most powerful woman in Barovia. What? And she pours herself some more wine. What would you change? <laughs> Look at me. What am I, the boss of the camp? Eh? The second in command. Maybe one day once she dies, I learn how to read the card someday. But I am not ancient like her. The, band, the camp will disband. Go north over to Valaki, the rest of them. Pff, what will I be? What will Alenka be? Huh? Hmm. I suppose you will be whatever you wish. But... You make a compelling argument. I will tell you. I will tell you something that she told me. If in return, you do your utmost to tell me the truth about what it can mean. She kind of settles down in her chair, leans forwards on her elbows and leans very far over the table. I know that trick. It works very well. Uh, so, I do remember something specific of what she said. Because it made me think of you. The first card she flipped over, having to do with history, she said that there was a secret that we could discover and that the Vistani held this secret and there was a missing child that held the key. She said that to you. She did. Hmm. And this is all you are willing to say to me. If I told you I had information that could lead you to this clue. Uh, well, that is a separate transaction now, isn't it? We have already made our bargain for one exchange. Now you wish more. Gisvaldo, my peacock, surely you know by now. This is not what you came for. Hmm. You are hungry for power. What would you do to achieve that power? What have you already done? <laughs> hmm. That is not up for sale. I see very much of myself in you, <clears throat> to be perfectly honest. I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. There are things about my past that I am very ashamed of. And when I try to make things better, all I seem to do is make them worse. Once I accepted that as my given fate, I became a lot less concerned about things. I will always make my situation worse, no matter what I try. It's very freeing, in a way. Perhaps I have just not wisened to the level of you yet. <laughs> One could say that a fool is wise, I suppose. And I wonder... I do... Uh, how long you will stick with these companions of yours, make, knowing that your presence will only hasten 
their fate and demise if what you say is true. How could you care about anyone and still stare around them, if indeed you care about them at all? Well, I find it interesting to combine the bad things that happen to myself. Sometimes it's a challenge. Sometimes the bad things I try to spread to other people. But that's when my great skills come into play. The only time. Making sure that when bad things happen, I do everything in my power to make sure they happen only to me. Sometimes I succeed. Those are good days. Sometimes I do not. Those are not so good. But it keeps things interesting. Hmm. And I have been grilled for information before. You say that Madame Eva is the leader of this camp, but I suspect that there is someone else to whom you owe allegiance. You suspect it, do you? Those hungry for power often seek it in places where they shouldn't. If you feel frustrated and stagnant here, I imagine you have sought it somewhere else. I would. Oh, my peacock. Always the one to boast your insights. I think it's time we parted ways. Hmm. What a shame. In a land that's so dark, we could have made things brighter for each other a little while. Hang on but, to that, Jeswaldo. And Hang on you to that. do owe me. I gave you some true information. And if you are not going to pay what you agreed to pay, then at the very least, you could give me information in return. This um, person, did you, you got- actually know where I might find them? A glimpse of the future provided from Madame Eva to me and now to you. That surely must be worth something. Sergei got a message today about a missing woman from the camp north near Valaki. A girl. Arabel. And what was that last bit, Dean? Arabel. Arabel. Her name. The name. The daughter of the leader up there. We have heard nothing about it. Not even a whisper. Well, there it is. There it is. We could have had so much more fun, Jesuardo, but... Uh, that fun is still not- on the table. <laughs> 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 if we take away this transaction element, and we make it less about what you want and what I want, within reason then we could have a great deal of fun. Just two people having fun. A man like you knows when a line has been crossed. And you Uh know exactly when you crossed it. Ah, yes. So it is us versus you. Why are you versus me? It seems to be the line that you say I have crossed. Accusations are deadly weapons here. I so, see. Jesualdo, go join your people. You are welcome to stay in the camp, but I recommend you go in the morning. 
I think that's a wise idea. And may I say that, all joking aside, I do wish you the best. And a fate better than my own with more happy memories. I believe what you say. And it is your brightest feather, I must say. Good evening. Good evening. And she will allow you to leave. Unmolested. I was, <laughs> it was in my head. <laughs> Still can't get it wet, can you? No. And you know, this particular place. <laughs> the struggle is real. Oh, boy. The night is young. Don't give up so fast. Yep, Sarif is about. He's fertile. I, I would think that, uh, that just... <laughs> Just because I've been wanting to do it ever since he said it, as Jezwelda comes back to the camp, he just steps on Tarif's nose, you know, thinking it's a rock. <laughs> and comes to, sits ah! back. <laughs> oh, boy! Damn lizard. Oh, well. you're back early. <laughs> yes. Sooner than I expected. Uh, myself as well. Well, I only gave you five minutes, but that's what. Well. Um, she was not interested in <laughs> well she was not interested in the physical properties I had to provide oh. why, would, why would she not be interested in you hey, I used to ask myself that question but I have experienced it so many times now I give it more of a 50-50 chance That's sometimes when I am incredibly charming and I think there's no possible way that I can lose, I still lose. And sometimes when I have done absolutely nothing but be repulsive, repugnant, a drunken fool, I find myself into the warmest embrace I've ever experienced. There is no you rhyme or reason to it. have strange luck, my friend. Very strange luck. Uh, anyway, I did find out a little information, but um, I think we'll wait to discuss it until it is a little less dark. Fair enough. I was thinking I might turn in anyway. I've had enough fun for the evening. <laughs> By the way, Strings, I think you are very well rid of this place. There seems to be a gaiety and fun, but beneath it, I believe there is... And he pulls out his pipe again. <laughs> Poison. And lights it. I have to say I agree. Sadly. Well, I've got permission now. Don't think I... on the stuff that came before. Just straight ahead. It's the only way. Well... <laughs> Before we do that, those um, visions you speak of, mm. were they because of that? And she uses the marionette to, just, to, to gesture to the pipe <laughs> just while I was smoking. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've had my fair share of, like, partying every now and then, especially when... Maris is not watching me so closely. She's very good at looking after people. I'll give her that. But I have actually never partaken of uh, whatever Jezwaldo has over there. I don't think I've oh, seen anything a day sap. in my life. It is quite amazing. <laughs> would you care to? In fact, would uh, anyone care to? <laughs> so, so, it makes so you so weed. Can I smell it? Do I know what black tap I... is? Black tar. Black tar, okay. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Black uh, sap. Black sap. Is black sap. Yeah, go ahead and make a <clears throat> nature, nature check. Yeah, even yeah, nature check probably because it's not that's necessarily an arcana. Can um, I smell it? Well, it's herbalism, isn't it? So I've got, I've got. I'll do an investigation because that would be the true. So it'd just be like 
it's if you lean closer to investigate 12 uh marie is gonna outstretch her own hand not the puppet her own hand to stop you from getting Mm -hmm. too close to it this would be like like i guess it would be like refined poppy seed yeah and so elimus you're aware of some of these substances and as you get closer you know, uh, your your brain initially is like, let's figure out what this is. What is the combination? How is it produced? But uh, your mind gets the better of you. You know that there are plenty of these things that can be produced, but there is no use to them besides euphoria, and they are more damaging. And your brain kind of just stops at that point. You're like, it, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Likely addictive, yeah. just produces short time pleasure. I don't care. And that's kind okay. of what happens in your head. <laughs> makes sense um i appreciate the offer as well though um i know i've i know what alcohol does to me and not sure this is the time to start me on something that uh that i have no idea what the consequences for will be <laughs> well if i was trying to sell it i would be more inclined to make you interested in smoking it but since i am not i completely understand and he turns I, to uh, Sarif. I've, Sarif has, after the smoke has gone around a bit, he kind of digs himself up and like locates the source and um, walks over. Mm. Do you have more? <laughs> I do. And do you also, before we move on from the past, where are you from? Mm, far away in a swamp. And uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I hold out my hand for for him to give me some. So I pass the pipe to Sarif. Ah, maybe no, I misjudged no. you. The, give me the... I hand the pipe. I, I don't take the pipe. Give me the, the stuff. Well, it won't be very useful without the pipe. What happened to my flute? <laughs> I, uh, um, you see, uh, you see, like the mage hand come back and the puppet kind of as if it's gesturing something back to you. Grab it. It gives you a little ball of opium. Uh, with a very practiced hand, he puts it in, lights it up, and covers all the holes on the flute and <laughs> starts smoking it out Ooh. of the flute. Yikes. All right. Okay. <laughs> Shotgun. All right. Last Twitch stream we have. All right. Make, make a con save. <laughs> don't ever smoke opium, kids. Ever. Don't, don't do just, it. Just don't do it. The worst uh, idea. Seven. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that was a big hit. Um... You are p- 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 poisoned. Yeah. And uh, cursed. Poisoned. And cursed. <laughs> and cursed. Uh, he will um, walk like uh, maybe 10 feet away from the fire, turn into a lion, and curl up in a big ball. Got it. Did that just, ha- <laughs> did that just happen? <laughs> Wait. Hold on. Is wait, is it evident that he is in physical distress, Sarif? I I'm not sure. Uh he wouldn't show it generally. Okay. All right. He would very much try not to show any sort of physical weakness. All right. Yeah. He's then probably I, like that, that, that drunk name. person that's trying to be sober though, you know. <laughs> well it's just like I'm standing up straight. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes black sap makes you feel really good, and sometimes it makes you turn into a lion, I suppose. Um, <laughs> strings, would you? Do it. <laughs> Do it. Oh, um, yeah, today we're going to come to you with peer pressure. Let's talk about peer <laughs> yeah. pressure, kids. Where's my dare program? <laughs> I. I. Don't trust myself when I lose control, so I know I will not partake. Very well. But thank you for the offer. Um, so hit this uh, lion now. I take it that he's human normally and just uh, turns into a lizard. 
Yeah. He's a no. He's a lizard normally. And that that bit about the swamp, that's about as much as we get out of him on a normal basis. So he's not being rude. Don't worry. I wonder if he could turn into a human. I'd be interested to know. Um, From what I found out, he's a druid in his people. So animals, probably more unlikely. Mm. So these visions, I see you moved away from the subject. If you're unwilling to talk about it, I've learned to respect that in people, but if you are willing to talk, I'd love to learn. Uh, I, mm -hmm. Claire uh, gets sort of visibly flustered. Um, not something that I, happens terribly often. I, I, I pour um, a drink. <laughs> I close my mind. Um, that that um hmm. uh, uh, not a good time in my life <laughs> you know the, the kind of thing where you you typically try not to think about too hard uh and just pretend that it doesn't exist although i've been told that that's a really bad way to deal with things and um i, I try not to but um sometimes it's easier uh to when you don't want to remember things. And she throws back as much of the liquid and the, the glass as she can in one fell swoop. If you don't want to remember things, then the black sap is really quite good. Nah, it's okay. I'm well practiced. It's been a while. It's all good. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm actually really tired now. Um, maybe, maybe another time. And I'm gonna go away from the fire and just uh, clap a hand on Jiswaldo, Mari. Lovely night. See y'all in the morning. And where, find where a place to <laughs> go find a place where I can curl up for the night. Don't let the bait bugs bite. Good night, Claire. The lion is very comfortable. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm gonna go over to where Sarif is and throw <laughs> my bed roll and just be like, good night. <laughs> And after all these years, I still can't socialize. She You're looks doing at you. fine. You're doing perfectly fine. So, um, you have a puppet. Great observation. <laughs> You're not you. blind. Does the puppet have a name? <laughs> Puppets don't have names. Oh, well, I think he should. Or is it a he or a she? It's a puppet. Hmm. Have you always had the puppet? For as long as I can remember. And you never named it or gave it a personality? No. I mean, I'm not saying it's a good or bad. I'm saying if you've had a puppet all your life, surely. Do you name your pipe? Does your well, pipe have a name? You know. Now that you mention it, I think maybe it should. Although I have not had my pipe my entire life. I don't have a... It, it's a toy. I don't have a connection to it as if it was a person. I don't quite understand why it would require a name. I see. So it is more of a tool. Yes. She looks. She looks really confused at this. Like, a lot of really. Is sitting there lapping it up. <laughs> She's clearly not crazy. She didn't name her. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how awkward she is, and he's just sitting there, like his books open and just looking up, trying to concentrate his book, but it's just smirking. Well, I'll ask you if you had to name a puppet. What would you name it? She leans in really close, um, almost like to, to his ear, and just oh, says, I know this game. Puppet. I would name it Puppet. Is that with one P or two? <laughs> Where are you from? I don't... 
I am from the beautiful country of, um, the capital city of Atkata, where I am. Why? As, as well, no. Tagarembo, that woman, dead for a or that of a sleeper. She begins to like circle him, like almost like she's analyzing what what's happening to him, like why he's acting this way. She's just looking at you, like she look almost like leans in. And she's like, "Is this part of the pipe thing?" Yes, De La Rosa. <laughs> A pipe dream. Hopefully, he's... You, have made some, you have made some great friends, brother. Mm. He seems to be a good man. From what I know, I take it he's fast asleep now. He is. He's passed out. The wine, champagne, opium, and sexual frustration has. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He seems to be very talented with that blade of his. I just, I, I can't stop looking. And she like grabs, like, if there's like a cushion, places it probably over his crotch to kind of hide the frustration. Oh, oh the, other, <laughs> the other sword. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. I'm surprised you could mm. see it. Mm. <laughs> I, get, I guess that's why she calls him Peacock. Anyways. Da, 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 da. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hoped to, I've hoped to become reunited with you, brother, but I did not expect it to be in this way. Oh, likewise, indeed. It's strange times. Very. So you came here willingly. It's only been a few days, but why are you here? We appeared here. Appeared just taken. Me and Essie were about to head off to travel, and then we woke up here. Strange. Have I, in the time I've been here, um, I've I, I know what like. Uh, Peruvians are kind of like, like I've picked up mm -hmm. the, how their yeah. behavior is. Has anyone else just sort of appeared? Is it is this like a like a thing I'm aware of, or is this new? Um, so about a month ago, you know that someone came, another group sort of came through the mists. At least one person did, maybe a month or two ago, and gathered a group to sort of incite a rebellion at the castle that was squashed quite thoroughly. However, there is a Vistani in the camp, you know, who, um, an old man who tells a very um, uh, sort of entertaining story about watching that battle. You never paid too much attention, but um, anytime he's asked, he'll go off on the battle against when Strahd fought the wizard. And, yeah. Whenever this speech ever occurred, what, did I believe a word he said? Like, can I roll an insight for then? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, uh, 18. Interesting. Um, you think that the um the way the story has evolved the first time was like uh you heard it was like a, oh my god you guys i just saw this and then so many people gathered around him that it just became his favorite thing to do and he was like listen to the story guys i'm gonna tell it again and each time it gets a little bit more fantastical which there's there's definitely some truth there but um, it's gone up, gotten a little, at least a little more exaggerated this time has gone on. But the kernel of truth, legit, as far as you can tell. Okay. You know, you're, I've only been here a few months, but your story sounds similar to, I hate to admit it, there's a guy who just wants to shut up about this one story, but 
I guess it could be a good learning curve. Um, people showed up here and tried to take on Strad and it didn't end well. It's up to you if you want to hear this story, but was one he does go on a bit. He was, actually. I keep getting mistaken for that same person. Well, by the sounds of the story, he was squashed. And you just see the puppet kind of like lie on the floor as if it's dead. Well, we are. my power is nowhere near strong enough to challenge a vampire yet. I mean, I guess it'll take some time to prepare. I can't imagine it'll be an easy fight, otherwise it would have been done by now. Mm -hmm. I have many books to read. Mm. But for now, I must read, I must sleep. I'm exhausted. Get some sleep. Have a sweet. We can travel again, finally. We can catch up. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, good night then. Um, I will probably head off to my tent, but just feel free to crash rather. Good you will night. notice yeah. other, um, there are other people who just seem to sleep under the sky, you know, putting out, uh, um, bed rolls near the fire just to have a little bit of the warmth um sleeping in the open here does not seem to be taboo or dangerous yeah i will just crash where i am by the fire mm -hmm. marie's just gonna head off to um i assume she has like a tent or like something or somewhere yeah. private if you can find some space you know that there are a couple communal tents that you can if you find a space you can you know sort of if Sleep if there's in an, there. if there's an empty, well, she she wants to, you know, get some like alone time, I guess. Um, okay. Before bed, then, but you know, then you might not actually find a tent, but you can find some space outside that would afford you some privacy. Okay. Yes, yeah, she'll she'll head off there, and um, you know, she doesn't want to look like bad in the morning. <laughs> So she's gonna like try and like so she can sort herself out before mm -hmm. then. Um but yeah, she'll uh she'll then rest down for the night as well. Okay. Cool. Everyone will get that long rest. Hooray! Finally. Finally. We'll go off. But waiting like weeks for it. <laughs> it's been eighty four years. <laughs> when I first started, I was only 21. <laughs> I'm now 22. Ah, uh, that's a much, much better maxing HP. <laughs> yep. Yes, that will expire. Um, unfortunately, the curse on Sauri will not. Yep. Will so remain. He's, he's no longer poisoned, you said? He's no longer poisoned. Okay. He is still cursed. Hmm. Well done. Was it a um, curse of Strahd? You know, you guys stumbled into another curse, you know? It's the, <laughs> Maybe. The curse Who of knows? Roscoe. Yeah. Cool. Um, you know, I, I'd love to keep going a bit, but I think that this is probably a good place to wrap up. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you all. That was a very... Um, RP story heavy session, but uh, a lot of stuff. There was a lot revealed. We got a wonderful new addition to the party Yay. and uh, got to sort a lot of things out. So um, very good. Thank you for everyone who tuned in, who stayed with us through, through it all. Um, there is more to come. And this was just the eye of the storm, a little bit of calm. I promise it won't stay that way. So mm -hmm. check back in to see what they get thrown into. Yeah. Anywho. We've got thank um, you everyone. Well we've got air off on Sunday. Um what's that, what's that what's that Eastern time? It's like four PM for us, isn't it? What's that eleven AM? 
11 a.m. 11 a.m. Eastern time. And then in the evening, we have uh, Trapped at Home again. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's an hour early now, isn't it? It's 5 p.m. No, Eastern. No, it's 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. Yep. Yeah. So looking forward to that as well. Um, so, yeah, hopefully see you guys on Sunday. Thank you very much for all the follows and the bits and stuff like that we've had. Um, and as I said, you know, we we are looking to rebuild the channel um, and it's going strong. We've got some, we've got a really good team going now, some good shows. So looking forward to what the future holds, really. So, uh, again, hopefully see you guys Sunday. Uh, if not, we'll see you again, hopefully, next Friday for some more missed opportunities. All right. Cheers, guys. See you. Uh, see you later. Yeah. Bye. Bye.